Morning, y'all. How are we doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. Good, good, good. Ethan, good to see you, buddy. Um, all right. You guys can hear me, see me okay? Yes, sir. All right, all right, all right, all right. Lucky we got you in the spot. Good to see you. Got a people, a lot of people just coming in. Good, good, good. Awesome. Well, guys, I'm I'm super excited. A lot of you who were here uh for this this last rendition of this, this last month, uh last month I did a, a master class slash um uh, just value call. Um yeah, a lot of people were telling me, could we just do this again? And and here we are. So super stoked about it, super excited. Um not a lot of heavy agenda today. I know last time I, I led with uh, talking about sound design. So um, I'll lead with a little bit of that. But I really actually just want to give a lot of room, a lot of space for you guys to just chime in. Maybe some things that are just on the on in the back of your mind, front of your mind, maybe even the side, wherever it is in your walk with your music production. I'd love to just kind of chime in and help out in any way that I can. So as, as people start making their way in, um, this doesn't have to just, pertain specifically to producing music, but it can also be just, uh, we're not going to get into avocado guacamole recipes. Maybe that'll be at the end, but we're going to really dive into maybe things that you are facing. Uh, it could even be just deep rooted stuff that you're thinking about, like, man, I, I'm, I'm just having a hard time visualizing where I want to go with my career in music or pursuing music production, or I don't even know what I'm doing here. <laughs> so uh kind of want to just open this up and also give you guys the opportunity just experience what I'm uh, and just give you a little bit of what where I'm at um mentally uh with Beat Academy and kind of give you the you know the heads up of of where I'm headed this year um in, in the ultimate new direction of where Beat Academy is headed and I'm really excited about it because it's just allowing myself and others to just experience just tremendous impact and growth with leveling up their music production skill sets. So without further ado, hey everyone. Um, I've got uh is it Dim 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 Damian Frank? So I'll I'll if you guys have stuff in the chat, let me see if you guys can put it in the chat. If you want me to listen to some music too, since you guys are here, um, yeah, just put the link to a SoundCloud or something I can hear in the in the Zoom chat. All right, well, hold hold on, guys, hold on. Uh I know it's it's gonna hit like the second I said that, like Whoa, whoa, slow it down. Um, I'll I'll just try to just pick and choose a couple. Uh, maybe as you're stepping up, you know, um, to the plate, want to share something that's on your mind. Um, yeah, feel free to just say, hey, I, you know, something I'm working on. If you got a link to the music, well, I'll be more than happy to just dial in and and pour in. Does Does that sound okay to you guys? Just want to make sure. Yeah. Is that cool? Yeah. Not a lot of not a lot of heavy agenda stuff this this month, but um, or maybe if there is a topic, you're like, hey, I'd love to cover vocal production or stuff like that sure we we can talk about that but i'm i got the sense just from emails and from messages that a lot of people are just in many different points of the timeline of of trying to get to their goals with their music and i kind of want to just take this time to just press in and see where you guys are at um also this is something that i'm doing on a regular basis uh a weekly basis for that matter um and before we hit the ground running I just want to share a little bit of what's where I'm at. You know, for those of you who have become Beat Academy members, uh, I'm just going to be a little bit vulnerable here, just share a little bit, and then I'll go ahead and dive into some of the things you guys are 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 dealing with or what's on your mind. So over the, and I've said this a little bit in the past call, but you've probably been hearing rumblings of this, but I'm just going to articulate it again. Um, I am now moving towards just providing mentorship. And what does that mean? Well, it means that, when I started off Beat Academy, I started it with the intention of wanting to aspire, encourage, and provide the most impact to those who are serious about wanting to level up their music production skill set. What does that mean? Well, it meant in the past five years, I've kind of gotten uh, you know, up and down, a little just distracted with a lot of either the marketing or just establishing and running a business and trying to get all that on board. But what I'm really excited about now is that I'm drawing into just doubling down and focusing on, on how can I provide less information and more transformation, right? And I think the best means that I've seen that happen, me personally, is when I'm doing 
just exclusive mentoring. Um, so similar to what we're experiencing now, I get a group of people, we meet weekly, and we dive in. And not just like foo-foo, cotton candy stuff. We're talking about like, it's not just, which EQ should I use for my snare drum? I don't know. Why are we why are we struggling with that when we need to be going deeper into the reason why you think an EQ is going to save your track, right? <laughs> so we're going, we're doing some really good work there. And we're, and 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 to me, that has been resonating with me personally. And I I figured, man, what would it look like if I just doubled down and really invested in those who are serious about taking that next step with their music? That is what I'm excited about. So um I'm 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 just opening the doors for application. I know before last year we did like Elite and Elevate. And so I'm no longer kind of doing those programs. I'm just opening the door for just mentorship, right? That's gonna look like six months. Uh, we meet weekly six months. And if you want more information about it, I actually put together on a simple little page that gives you all the details about that. I'm going to post that here in the chat for you guys to check out. All right, you can check that out, look into it, and just apply, right? Just apply, see if this is going to be something that you feel like, man, this is something I've been looking for for a long time. It's not just me uh, mentoring. I'm, I'm calling upon some amazing uh, people that I've been able to do life with, um, you know, uh, guys like Jimmy Douglas, Frank Socorro, a bunch of people that I really admire and have been awesome. And they're also uh, jumping on board as, as well. So I'm really looking forward to this. It's been amazing. So yeah, this is something that's resonating with you. This is something like, man, this is, this is going to really help me take me to the next level. Sure. If not, don't worry about it. Show up on the next monthly call that we're doing now, right? My heart and <laughs> my heart is to help you any way I can. Um, so there's plenty of resources. Um, I'm, we're going to be migrating uh, a lot of the courses. So I'm using Kajabi, which has been hosting all my courses up. So I'm going to be migrating that to a new platform. That's going to allow anybody who's invested in Beat Academy over the years. I'm going to give you access to the stuff that you've invested. I want to do right by you guys. And if you've spent any, you know, hey, I, I bought this you know, Beat Academy Pro membership. What do I do with that? Well, I'll credit you that towards the mentorship program. Like, just just talk to me hit me up. I want to just do right. I want to be able to come alongside and help you any way that I can. So uh, I'm prepping all these resources, the courses, the producing indie pop, vocal production, all that. I'm going to be putting it on a platform that'll just have you guys have access to it. Right. And if you just need time, oh, hold on a second. If you just need time, um, do one, you know, if you just need time to grow in some of the fundamental stuff, then yeah, just, just take advantage of all the free resources that we have. So I hope that makes sense. Does that, does that make sense, everybody? Yeah. Yes, maybe. Sounds cool. Good yeah. Awesome. Now, if you have questions, I'm sure many questions are arising about, about that. Once again, there's a link. Um, I'll put it in there. I'll also email you guys afterwards, letting everybody know, hey, here's this mentorship program that that Ivan was talking about on the call. So, yeah, please apply. Um, I'll I'll go through the applications and and. Might not, it's not going to be a good fit for everyone, but I really am excited about this. We're already seeing such tremendous impact and growth for the people who jumped in from last month's call. So I'm super excited about it. All right. Let's get, let's get down to it, guys. Um, yeah. Anybody want to want to bite the bullet? Don't want to jump in? Any anything you uh, you know, I guess I guess you could do a raised hand here, I guess reaction, or uh you can raise your hand, or I've got uh win love, win love here. Let me um yeah win love where are you at how you doing hey pretty good How, how's it going ivan um thanks for good good on. man good, good to see you yeah likewise so my question kind of ties into what i've shared in the chat about my tracks um one thing that i've noticed on this journey is like you know as artists we tend to like different things whether it's different genres or different vibes and we try and tend to make what really inspires us and so what i'm curious about is having too different of a vibe um detrimental to us as artists or should we just be trying to make things and just that we like and then you know just put that out for the sake of getting your art out there um because like the the two tracks i've sent here are kind of like um one's dancey and then one's um a bit more i don't know my friend called it like evil carnival and so you know, with those different types of things going on that's going to be the vibe of my album just like a bunch of different sounds that i like but um I guess the main thing is, is that something that's detrimental or beneficial? Why do you think it's detrimental? Um, just from a audience perspective, it would be like harder to build up an audience if they don't really know what kind of sounds like 
the particular the artist is going for. Where are you getting that from, bro? Um, I don't know actually. It's just kind of a thing that I've been had had in my head for a bit. So I just right. do, you know. Pa pause there for a moment. You, I just want you to hear what you just said. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. So I think even that decision of I, I really want you to press into that. You're you're asking, I, I want to help articulate the right question for you, right? Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't think the question is, should I do multiple styles of music or should I do this specific music? I think the question is actually a lot deeper than that, buddy. Mm -hmm. It's actually, why am I so afraid to release music I'm passionate about making? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very I think true. that's the right question you should really be thinking about. Yeah, because what you're doing is now you're already saying, well, I'm willing to bend. I'm willing to compromise. I'm willing to bend over backwards and just release stuff that I think will be the most attractive to those mm -hmm. who listen. And right off the bat, you're already compromising your the passion that you have for making music. You see what's happening here? Yeah. Does, yeah. does that make sense? You're coming. You're stepping into a place of saying, I don't know if I actually value what I'm making. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a bunch of stuff. Hopefully, many of these seeds that I'm throwing out on the way, one of them plants in good soil. Mm -hmm. Even if you had success with that one Gangnam style type of record that you just made for the sake of making it, right. you will still not have enjoyment from that as opposed to the records that you love making. Very true. Yeah. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. So, so what are we really asking, bro? <laughs> Why am I not, why am I so caught up in trying to do things that other people want? There um, you go. Yeah. Rather than go. doing something true to myself. Yeah. Yeah, man. How, how do you feel about that? Um, Something I have to think about, but I think it, it get, it get you get caught up, I guess, I think with the whole social media thing and I'm like, oh, this works, this works, blah, blah, blah. But then. Um, I guess that's the biggest thing for me because for a while, you know, it's hard. It's easy to what get works? caught up. In what the works? What works? What works? Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Um, tell me. Give me the secret, bro. Give me. Give me the magic formula. What, what works? Uh, just digestible content for people to enjoy in short form videos that is easy for them to like with a quick hook. Something that's catchy. Something that's you know something. Okay. That's, yeah. What What in that word salad that you just gave me? Uh huh. What in there? Where does music I love making? Where, where did that come into that equation? None of it. Right. Yeah. Right. So don't, please don't miss, don't, don't, don't misunderstand me. Those things you spoke about, those are going to be tools to articulate that music you love making to an audience. Mm -hmm. Sometimes what happens, we get our wires crossed and we can, we conflate that with the, we conflate the means of speaking to our audience with the message we're speaking with our audience. Does that make sense? Yeah. Definitely. And those are two different things. And we need to be very careful that they don't get, um, they don't get twisted. And then that's what's, that's the pressure that you're feeling. Yeah. You're feeling the pressure of like, well, man, now I have to do, you know, I got to light my eyebrows on fire and then do a TikTok thing. And I got a breakdance fight while I'm making, you know, I'm in Publix making a beat with two turnips. And it's like, what the crap are we doing? Like, yeah. what is this? Yeah. And I, I felt the same thing. Like, this is why I'm I'm moving towards mentorship because the past two years I've had consultants and business people tell me, well, if you want to grow your business, you got to, you know, you have to tap dance. You got to, you know, you do some ballet with penguins. And then while mm -hmm. you're teaching tutorials, I'm like, why do I have to do that? When all I really want to do is mentor people. Yeah. So that happens with us as, as well with, uh, with our music. So let's go right back to the drawing board. Let's focus on making the music. If you're doing a tropical house record and then the next one is a massive attack down temple record, okay, great, man. But are you getting lost in that process so much that you are so excited about the the what you're making mm -hmm. that the results, but that the joy of that will overflow to meet the needs of the audience that receives it? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah, it makes so much sense. And we got some, we got some. Sense. We got some stuff happening in the chat. Yeah, so that's that's a great thank you, Winlove. That's that's really good, man. But listen, don't rush yourself to even find the answer to that just yet. Mm -hmm. Give yourself some time. And the question you're really asking not is what should I do, is why do I feel this way? Okay. Yeah. And I really want you to just press in and and take some time, write it down, go for a walk after this call, whatever, mm -hmm. and ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? And then when you when you when you really marinate with that, that's gonna give you a lot more insight. Then 
diving into the solution. I'm not interested in giving you prescription or solutions. I want to help you identify why you're 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 why you're putting up the roadblocks yourself. Definitely. Yeah, thank All you right. so much. That's helpful. Yeah, man. That that was good. Uh Dean, uh, Dean um Dahlia? Dean Dahlia? Am I saying that right? Hey, what's up? What's up, man? Yeah, can you hear me right? Mm-hmm. Nice. Um I just had a kind of a quick, more uh, specific question. I was on the last call and um, talked a lot about just like getting good at sound selection and stuff and um, recommended like just kind of making your own library of sounds that are organized in a way that makes sense. You can find them easy yeah. whenever you have you know an idea that you want to get to. I'm working on a tight budget. So I'm just wondering if you have like best bang for your buck like, what would you recommend? Are like good BST libraries or like sound packs or anything like that? Just as like a really great starting place, so I can actually start to build a library like that. All right, best bang for your budget right now, like no money, is sampling records you already have access to. So that's going to be the lowest hanging fruit. So like MP3 songs you've imported, going in there finding to. Now I'm not saying hey, but like I'm ripping off sounds. Think of it like this: it's like I'm I'm taking these sounds here as a means to get closer to the sound that I'm looking for, right? So you're you're understanding them, you're, you're getting familiar with sonic fingerprints of kicks, snares, and stuff like that. Okay, next up, I think, um, well, what's, it's interesting because you're asking, hey, if I'm on a budget and I have to do an expedition and look for certain right kicker and sounds to sample, I start off with like bare bone, like there, there could be a kick that you normally like. So, what kind of music are 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 you interested in doing? Right now, it's mostly just kind of like, kind of like I would say poppy EDM. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, dude, I would start with just one sound, like poppy EDM. Like, okay, so just open up a splice account, maybe just for one month, right? Ten bucks yeah. or something like that. And then what you would do is. Just d dial in. The, what's going to help you identify the common denominators here is when you put in <laughs> reference tracks into your project, like I showed last month, when you keep doing that, you're going to start to find, like, man, that, that kick is very similar to, like, the five tracks that I'm using as a reference. Like, it's got a same character. So then you start, let me find a kick that's very much in that lane. And you just type EDM pop kick in Splice, right? And that's going to enable you to be like, okay, I'll have like that one kick for the next five tunes or something like that, right? Um, I don't, there isn't a, a, a clear cut solution because you could just find sample packs online all over the place. I'm sure there's people who even have free, Cymatic has free stuff and uh, I have free stuff. As a matter of fact, I if you're not, um, um, please hit us up. I, I do put like a Beat Academy sample pack, uh, not the one that you often free, but there's another one I think for members that I've been giving. So um i'll post that on there as well just stuff that i've created and things that i have that will be helpful so start there right but uh, the mindset is like okay should i just go out and buy all the sample it's like, like i have like two or three kicks that i'm always gravitating towards now and a lot of the pop stuff i'm doing then when i lose you know flavor i kind of just want to get inspired and find other kicks and stuff uh, and so yeah i hope that makes sense i don't know what's up hold on one second yeah. uh yeah. Does that make sense? It sure does. Yeah, that's helpful. Cool, man. Um, yeah. Let me uh let's go to uh rain rain? Rain rise. Right. I'm um, bro, right. Oh my guys. <laughs> Give me some grace, guys, because the names I'm like I'm I'm horrible no, you're with. Good. Them. What's up, you man? How you doing? Right? Yeah, good. yeah, I got you. Good. Thanks for uh thanks for having this. Yeah, man. Um, my pleasure. So I sent something in chat. I don't know if you're going to dive into songs now or later, but some of my yeah, biggest sure. can, questions. Can, can you resend it? Just because yeah, like sure. the chat, get, or just send it to me. That way I can know. Yeah, I don't you know do how that to... for sure. But um, my biggest questions are going to be like creating that 3D kind of sounding mix, getting it off that just left and right kind of grid where you can move stuff forward and back. Because I'm struggling a lot with, like, stereo versus mono, especially, is, like, a big thing. Like, I'm using Logic, and so it'll de facto make, like, a mono track, and I'm, like, stereo immediately. I'm listening on headphones. Why would I want it mono? So that's kind of where I'm at. 
is like really struggling with that three dimensional What's, mix. What what about it that you're struggling? Can you be specific? What is it exactly about mono versus stereo that you're struggling with? Like I just don't like. Why would I make a track mono? Essentially, like I'm listening on headphones or I'm listening on speakers. It's all stereo. Why would okay. I want to record anything mono? Okay. Why would you? Okay. Tracks in individually in the session. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, first, I mean, sometimes you're recording a tambourine part, you know, you're going to record that mono unless you're recording two microphones. You've got both hands with the tambourines, right? Like, so you record a two, you know, a vocal, you're recording a mono vocal, right? You're recording one instance in that. Um, if we're talking about like, what's the purpose of mono? Like, what's the purpose of like condensing a mix into mono, checking it is because mono allows you to get a, it, it helps identify the depth of one instrument from the other. For instance, when you put things in mono, when you condense everything in mono, what you're really doing is like, okay, who's going to get the highlighter here? Like, who stands out in the mix? Okay. okay. When I put everything in mono, yeah, man, I, I can barely hear that guitar that I put so much reverb and delay and all that crazy stuff on there. It's getting lost in the mix, but in stereo it sounds really cool. That's because there's a lot of emphasis on the stereo imaging, but when you condense to mono, you notice that the guitar is just being lost. So what you do is you compensate by just raising the volume of that, but then you're also raising the volume of all the stereo. So, do you see what I'm saying? So now you're really, okay, maybe I should do less of it. Like it helps identify the overall balance. Yeah, of, okay. So think of it like this. Mono helps you identify the, the, the depth of volume. Vocals are way up front, bass is way up front, so you get this tug and pull. Stereo allows you to create more, uh, you get the sense of feel of the, of the, the width, right? Okay. So um, does, does that make sense? So like yeah. when, I would, when I check mixes sometimes in mono, I'm like, all right, like, let me start with mono, the relationship from the kick to the bass to the, to the vocal, how do they all sit? Like, does the vocal really jump out now? And, it, and if I can get a good, decent balance of stuff in mono, I know it's going to translate very well in stereo. And plus, by the way, when you're jamming on your phone or your neighbor's Alexa or whatever, sometimes you're not listening in a perfect stereo environment. You're over here, you're, you know, you're washing the dish, you're taming a possum that's running to the house, whatever's going on in your life. Very rare are we listening on a perfect stereo image and don't even get me started on the atmos right like so now we're now we're talking about like yeah so the phone a lot of environments even when you're in a car you're not like in a perfect you know stereo thing you're on one side so but you you get my vibe right mono is yeah. a really helpful um truth telling technique in your mixes to identify what's the balance of of the elements there got you okay no yeah that makes yeah. sense cool man yeah yeah, yeah. Thank you. um Let's see, we've got it's great. Um, uh, uh, lucky, hey, I'm, I'm just going in whatever order has it on my thing. And if you guys have, uh, let me see if I can, <clears throat> I don't know if you yeah. can hear me. Yeah, got you, buddy. I'm Thanks first. for joining the call. Thank you for having me. Mm, my pleasure. Uh, my main, my main question would probably be, so I have my little brother. He um, started singing opera, um, great opera singer, uh, wants to transition to pop. Once he made that commitment, I kind of wanted to, you know, work with music since I love, you know, I, I, I just I have a, a lot of passion for, for music, right? But my question is, I, I tried you know learning piano guitar all this stuff i couldn't do it i couldn't do the, the the whole thing right but i was wondering do i need to have that fundamental of piano and guitar and all other instruments in order to try to become a producer or try to make music because i know like I, I i came across a lot of videos where it says you like you know there's a lot of producers out there that don't even know how to play the piano. They just know the fundamentals, so they 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 can still do it. So I, I don't know what's your take on that. Yeah. Well, let me ask you. Your your the goal of you wanting to learn piano and these instruments is to be able to produce 
and your your younger brother that you're believing and investing in, right? Correct. Okay. Um is it is it necessary uh wh where are you based out of? Where are you from? I'm in, Tor in Toronto. Okay, so in Toronto. So is it necessary to know every single street that you drive on in order to drive? No. Okay. Because you have tools that allow you to tell you where you need to go. Correct. Right? Okay. Um, back then, before Google Maps and all this, you needed to have a good understanding of the area you lived in. Like, oh, I know what 25th Street is. I know that. And so it was very much required. Yeah. I kind of look at it in that same approach. There's so many tools available that can help you get from point A to point B without the necessary need of, of knowing the streets, every street you got to turn. Does it help you to know every street you're turning on? Sure. In case the freaking thing just dies out on you, you know how to read a map, right? <laughs> Correct. But is it is it essential in the sense that you need it to do what you got to do? I don't think so. Um, so it depends on how much depth do you want on the journey to get from point A to point B. But more importantly, I think the deeper question here is not just should I learn piano or should I learn these instruments? It's actually in what place are you valuing, you know, like where you're at on this journey, right? So like you can probably, rather than saying, okay, I'm going to learn music production from the ground up to produce him, what is the least amount of effort you can take right now that will have the greatest amount of impact in your brother's career right now? Do you need to be the producer? Could it be no. much more worth your time to be the liaison and connect them with other guys because you have a good sense of musicality? You can you can be the somewhat of a manager role. Does that make sense? Yes. I think that will give you both more more time because it's going to take a lot of time. You're now starting from the ground. Okay, let me learn what a DAW. Let me learn the grammar. Let me learn all these things. Let me let me learn how I connect Ableton Live to my toaster oven so that in the morning it pop. Like you're learning all this craziness. When if you're looking for the biggest fruit to have in your brother's life, it could just be a means and source of encouragement, and it can also be like, dude, rather than have me reinvent the wheel, let's just find other guys who can just knock it out of the park. Who are like you know, 500 steps are way ahead of me. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like that's so, so yeah, that, that would be in my brother's best interest. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. But I also kind of, I kind of enjoy doing this. Uh, right? Okay. So I kind of also want to get this into like, you sure. know, get myself going in it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That's now, why I was wondering, I'm like, do I need, you know, do I need to take some courses for for like piano and this to learn like or you know like i, I don't know like for example like i i, I honestly <laughs> i i don't know like it's it's what what do you want to do right like right yeah we have i've got to be so what i've learned over the the 21 years of doing this for a living is i can be very and what I've been learning over the past several months of, of transitioning into mentoring and, and teaching people is like, I've had this inclination of immediately wanting to provide prescriptions, right? Like, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. And what I've seen over the past year is when I prescribe prescriptions, I don't allow people to identify those uh, to the root causes of those symptoms. And yeah. I think the most service I can do for you is like, okay, man, like, what do you want to do? Like, well, I want to learn how to play chords. I guess you better learn how to play music. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I want to. I want to learn how to how to be. I want to learn how to make like EDM tracks. I guess you better learn how to how to. You know, you you see what I'm saying there? Like so, like yeah, yeah. Yeah. So shed a lot of the prerequisites and the burdens you're placing on yourself, and just start with, I love making this, because at the end of the day. The person on the other side of Spotify, the person on the other spot, the side of the laptop doesn't care whether you know the difference between a major or minor chord. Correct. Because they're just listening to the music you're making. Yeah. Whether you use, you know, a Max for Live plugin to do all the chords for you or loops or samples, they're like, ooh. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, when you start to step out and be like, man, I don't know if, I, no, just have fun with the process. Because the person on the other side of the receiving end of the music you're making 
isn't going to be. Now, obviously, if, you know, you've got a bunch of jumbled up chords and a bunch of stuff, they're like, oh, this guy doesn't really seem to have it all together with his music. Okay, well, then that's what you're presenting to the world. So you just got to. So, yeah, man, get lost in it. Have fun. I have a bunch of resources, right? Just take advantage of that. Um, learn as much as you can. Soak that in. Uh, if you're looking like to expedite the whole process and like, hey, man, I, I really want like coaching for this. And you can join. Um, but I think right now, I think a good fit for you, Lucky, would just be like just taking some time to have fun. Soak all the, the stuff that you can. And then when you've gotten a, a good like rhythm in place there, I think, yeah, I'm like, yeah, let me jump on the coaching thing and, and help me kind of articulate, get there, you know, and experience that accelerated growth. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, tell, 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 bro, I, I need glasses. Tell, tell R. Yeah. Hey, how are you? It's Telha. Is it Taya? Telha. Telha. Well, yes, sir. That was my no next problem. guess. That was my next guess. You, took, you robbed me of the opportunity. <laughs> no problem. No problem. It's okay. All good, man. Nice yeah. to meet you, man. Oh, dude, my pleasure. I'm so grateful that you're here. I'm grateful that you're having us. I appreciate it. Thank you. What's up? Uh, so my question is, it's more all about um, so I'm 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 a technical person. I don't really care about like uh fame and fortune. I think that's just a byproduct of uh great work. You know, it'll come along. Um, so I'm I'm really just trying to become the best producer I can. And uh, is my camera still on, by the way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Just making sure. So yeah, so I'm just trying to become the best producer I can. I just want to be able to like make everything sound like you know radio ready. So I've been doing so much studying. Uh, like I've taken like you know like uh, I'm sure you know AU five. Like I've taken a bunch of I've taken a bunch of like his like courses like School of mm -hmm. Bass and like seen his like walkthroughs and like I like I make notes of everything and keep going back and forth. So I'm just trying to become the best producer possible. I, the the rest for me doesn't matter. Like I just want to be able to bring all the life I I can I want to just be be able to bring like the songs that I want to life and I just want to be able to do it beautifully. So um I, I kind of came in here raw. I just got the email like last night. I was like okay let's let's see where this goes because I've been watching your videos and your your you know your knowledge is fantastic. So uh I'm I'm more so really asking you just like what where can you do direct me to so I can like learn as much as I can so I can like learn how to like mix and master the best and and I also did want to ask you about like some of the details about your your courses. I don't know if you have like multiple courses or it's just like the single mentorship pro program and how, yeah. everything. Yeah. So I just want to so you know just please let me know um you know what you teach and how how in depth it is just so like I know if it's for me or not. Underwater basket weaving, bro. I don't do any music production and discussion. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the wrong place. <laughs> um, first of all, man, I actually really am encouraged to hear just such a great ambition and drive to just soak up as much as possible. Um, I, two things to that. I think a, that is such, you know, being teachable is such an amazing thing. And we're just in such a today day and age to be around so much wealth of knowledge. It is just amazing. Um, one thing I've seen though, and caution is just, um, you know, there's there's so many varying opinions. There's so many, hey, this is the EQ before the compressor, compressor before the EQ, or do this, or do this, and this. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So I think um, just being able to have moments of rest from consumption where you have time to fail, to slip up, to mess up, and, and really give yourself the opportunity to just learn from those, right? Um, when there's an immediate, there's a consistent, I need, I, I need, I need, I need, you know, let me drink from the fountain of, of YouTube knowledge and, and drink from that. Give yourself some time to just rest and, and, and figure, give yourself the challenge of getting through hurdles on your own. Okay. And, and not being so quick to being like, why well, I, 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 I want to get this sound. How would I get that sound? All right. You know what? Give yourself, give yourself like a day to figure that out before going to a YouTube video. Mm -hmm. Okay, because what that what you're doing there is you're actually you're 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 creating more depth and quality to the knowledge you're gaining, mm -hmm. rather than the immediate. It's like we're, we we can be having a diet of cotton candy, mm -hmm. and every and and that thing just disappears the moment it touches your mouth. But to have some sustenance, give yourself a little bit of time to just work through some of those challenges that you're facing. Um, does that make sense? So what what am I doing? Well, I've decided to just. I was doing courses. I had courses, you know, digital content. Nothing wrong with courses. I love doing. I spent the past five years making them. 
But what I've seen, the leverage I have personally, I'm I'm not just the average YouTuber. I've been producing music for the living for the past 22 years. I've done, you know, this is in a virtual background. This is this is stuff I've, and I've been blessed to be able to do that. And what I've lost sight of is the fact that I can impact people's lives. Like I don't have to cling to check this course. I was like, what I love doing is this. I love this. Like this is what excites me. Being in talking to you, being in a group setting, pouring into people, uh, mentoring, helping you articulate, getting to the deeper whys of things. Like not just I. That's where in this season of life that I'm in. Mm -hmm. that's what really, really just excites me, which is why I'm doing these calls, right? Because I love it and it's not work for me and it's an abundance that I get to, and it's an, this is a privilege I have to be able to speak to you, to help you take your next step forward. That's how I view this. So I wanted to just double down on that. And so that's why I created the mentorship program. So if you really wanted mentoring, which is unlike courses, this is a personalized articulation of, all right, bro, where are you at? Like, let's hear where you're at. Let's see some music. I mean, and it's not very, it's not a technical. You said, I'm a technical person. Great. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you're also an emotional human being. You're also, you know, <laughs> there's mm -hmm. a lot of things tied into aspects of creating your art and getting it out there to the world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That, that aren't just technical. There's a lot of things I learned that you just don't pick up from YouTube videos. You're right, because it's it's specifically catered to what you're struggling with and what roadblocks you're dealing with at the moment. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and sometimes you just can't find a Google search that perfectly articulates the emotional rut that you're in with your music. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what the program is about. If you want more, I'll, I'll keep posting it, but I'll put it again in the chat. Uh, that's what this program is about. It's, yes, technical stuff. You want to learn how to get your drums popping? We'll talk about that. But I'm more concerned about why you think your drums need to get popping for you to get to where you need to get. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and then people, and I've got guys in the program who are like, okay, man, like, I've got my drums, I got my stuff. How do I make money? Like, how do I find clients? How do I produce, get placements? How do I get stuff in sync? So there are people in different walks of life that mm -hmm. my years of expertise have allowed them to 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 help them through. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, th I hope that, that explains... helps. I, that helps a lot. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, just uh, one more one more thing, if that's okay. Never. I'm <laughs> kidding. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, I mean, you know, tech. It's like the thing is like um, I agree with you. You know, us humans, we're emotional. That's why we like or dislike things. But um, like uh, I mean, that's it's the whole emotional factor that I got into making music is just because yeah. like you know you want to you want to make people feel something something positive or you know you know upbeat downbeat. But uh, there's also uh, also but like you know the the whole reason I'm trying to get I'm trying to get the technical knowledge because it's just like um, I I always think like if you learn your fundamentals your event you're, at some point you're gonna have to learn those fundamentals if you want to go further so why have to why try to skip over it and end up coming back instead of just learn it so that's why that's, I try that's to, wisdom bro that's wisdom yeah. so yeah absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, uh, from your like, I was you know watching your videos too. You know, I was just like, um, well, I don't like. I was kind of intimidated by like the piano or something because like I know my fingers are a bit like slow, but I've been like, but like you know, like I saw your video and you said, you know, it's like, you're if you learn an instrument, you're opening more doors for yourself. You don't need it, but I mean, you know, it's like it just opens more doors for you. So, so, um, so that's why like I stay technical just to give you some context. But my my question is like, um, how much uh how much like i have i have a good understanding of music theory but like um how much like for yourself specifically like how much of like just like you know just like when you have a like a track idea like how much um how much theory do you use really like in terms of like to, to guide you like for example like are you ever like okay i feel i kind of have this beat in mind it's going to be like an a sharp minor or it's going to be a b melodic melodic minor or something like that like how often or how much might you use that and how much might you like veer off from that um yeah it ain't that deep for me um okay. it, mm -hmm. it, it you know because i'm driven about the emotion of like ooh, i don't know what chord i just did but that that spoke to me and i move off of that mm -hmm. um and there there are people who come from that framework like oh mm -hmm. i can you know i'm very good with theory and i think at the heart of your question is it's funny, a lot of times we're asking, what's what's the one key that will unlock the door of endless inspiration when I start my track? Mm -hmm. 
the funny thing is we all have that key, but we oftentimes think we need to find another one. And that key simply is when you're inspired, that's always going to be the one that unlocks any door that you're willing to walk through. Okay. And that inspiration comes whether you've heard a Miles Davis record or you're listening to Megadeth on your way to work or you just happen to open a doll and you just watch a video on doing some granular stuff. That's what I'm saying. Like the moment I put my next step of inspiration already in a box, I've already suffocated the life of that inspiring moment, that creative mm. spark. Mm. I've sense. learned that the hard way. So for instance, like sometimes when I'm when I have an artist in the studio or I'm working with a songwriter, uh, sometimes I'm I'm prone to like, okay, yeah, let me let me get these chords and put them in place. But really the best things that have happened is when I just have a, a human relationship and talk with them. What are you going through? What are you struggling with? What music are you liking? And nine out of 10 times, we are actually just listening to Spotify and we're just vibing out with records. Mm, and okay. I was like, oh, you hear that Sade record? I would love to make a song like that. Really? All right, let's do that. And I've mm. come up with some drums and we start. And that's what I'm getting at, right? I, so do I chop this up, you know, A minor to the G and that? No, not really. But I am, I need to grow in some more of, that, of those areas. I need to grow in, you know, um, I have a good, I've played piano, I've played bass, trombone was actually the instrument I played for like almost 20 years. <laughs> like, like, so, but like, so yeah, music theory allows me to understand and, and understand it. It opens doors but for you, right? It opens a door, but I eventually, I'm going to go Morpheus here. I, I'm the one that has to walk through it, right? So, absolutely. yeah, man. <laughs> good stuff, bro. Um, okay. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah, if you want more info, just just click the link and apply. I'll also email everybody after the call, but yeah, just apply if if, if that's something that you're right looking. now. Thank you very much. Yeah, good, bro. Awesome. Um, Ethan, what's up, man? I'm good. How you been? I'm here, bro. I'm you know, I'm here with all you. This is this is the best part of my day so far. Well, no, second part of the best day of the day. Yes, how are you? Let's just go with that. I, I'll take that. I'm I'm doing good. My question, I I finally started going. The chat just finally realized who my favorite artist is. I, I, I wonder. I wonder. Anyway, my question my question is um I've been finally releasing all my stuff online. I'm doing mostly like instrumental, like funky Latin video gamey stuff. But mm -hmm. I'm trying to start branching out into like actual singing and like try try to go a little mainstream but still stay true to myself why My only roadblock may may just for fun okay and if i could if that could become a business for me any income that would be awesome but that's more like a second just i'm doing most of this this just for fun it's just my roadblock right now is ha I have this weird anxiety about like singing and like only, and I'm in my room t with myself whenever I make my music. So it, yeah. I just don't, I just get anxious just thinking about singing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, dude, thank, thank you for sharing that, man. I know that's, that's something that probably a lot of us here can relate to. Um, and, and it just just for comfort, can anybody relate to? Just, and you could just visually put your hand up. Any any anxiety with recording your own vocals? Okay, great. So, a I hope that's a comfort that you're not alone. Um, and 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 that that's something that sometimes we oftentimes forget. Like when we're on this journey of making our own music, we get this tunnel vision and don't think. Oh, when we hear vocals on other people's records, we think it was a breeze for them. But we don't get to see the hours of emotional therapy they had to go through just to even get that vocal down. Um, so. I want to press in into why do you think you're so anxious about your own vocals? I, I'm thinking it's mainly mainly from like back back in like middle school. There was this one teacher that almost everyone in the school hated because we were basically forced to do choir. Okay. And it wasn't even like fun choir. It was like boring, like who is great we should all strive to get A's kind of choir. Yeah. So and I think it started from that. Yeah. 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 So, you know, we're going to do a little therapy session here, guys. So hold on. All right. Hold on. <laughs> Just hold tight guys. But this is good. I, I, I want you to realize this. Th these are, this is the stuff I'm talking about. The nuances that we just can't pick up on, 
on quick tutorials because we're so like the reason why you yeah, here's the vocal chain, here's the plugin, here's the thing. But none of that is going to help with the anxiety that someone has with even getting their voice onto the microphone. So yeah, when you're tying in, you know, it could be as, it can be as deeply rooted as like nobody really even believed in me growing up. And therefore that lack of belief in in myself doesn't even allow me to feel confident enough to deliver vocals. So Ethan, I think a good step would start to, there needs to be a runway that you need to build for yourself that allows you to gain, gain that confidence. So granted, we're not all going to be operatic singers and maybe, you know, we're not a tremendous vocalist. I know you're not trying to be the next, you know, prince, but the the the, the reality is it's not about it's not about where you're striving to become as a vocalist. You're just trying to gain the confidence you have in your own voice. And so I think a good way of doing that is um, I mean, you could start out with just some basics, like just even some basic vo vocal lessons. Like, hey, maybe I'll just take some basic vocal lessons that'll allow me to just be okay with the voice. Everybody hates the sound of their own voice when they're recorded. That's just the reality. When you record your voice, even speaking or reciting a, a poem for class, Ew, they cringe. That's how I sound, right? So um, I would take time in just recording some very basic covers, right? Just like, and I'm talking about like a verse, maybe start with vo four bars and just go through the pain of recording it. First, start off, if if anything, with the simplest way of recording. Oftentimes when you have to set up the microphone and you connect to the preamp and you go to the DAW, you give yourself the excuse of that resistance being the reason why you can't do it. So Get a simple recording device, whether it's your phone, right? Get your phone and put a voice memo and just start singing and uh, to something. Then take a step back and write down the reasons why you cringe at that recording. Like write it down specifically. Well, man, I sound like a dying chipmunk or whatever it is. Like put it down and articulate that. And then you really need to press into like, why do I feel that way? Like, where is that coming from? And and do the deep stuff. Like, yeah, it's from the middle school stuff. Because when you start getting to the roots, like, yeah, man, nobody really believes in me. I don't really think I, and then start dealing with, why am I not believing in myself? And then you can really tap into some of those insights. Not to say you're going to get the therapy done all yourself, but then it's like, okay, I can I can start working towards building that. It's you know um, my identity is not wrapped up in what somebody else says about my voice or my music. Okay, great. Then you can get through like okay, what can I do to disguise? Right? What can I do to help if I if what's making me cringe is like I'm out of I'm out of tune. Okay, great. There's things like auto tune and 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 melodyne. So there you go. There's your tune. Okay. Well, my timing stinks. Okay, great. Now you you start receiving, like you start going piece by piece and start identifying the weakest links and you start growing and rehearsing how to fix that. Does that make sense, Ethan? Yeah. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to have raw vocal. You can be like, I'm going to put a vocoder on it. I'm going to pitch my foreman up. I can pitch the vocal down. I can really do some cool stuff. I want to work on that until you start growing the sensibility of like, oh, I'm now confident with putting my own vocals down. Um, I hope that makes sense. Does that make sense to everybody? You can let me know in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. And and all those things, finding the right key. I, I love that Mark is talking about like find the right key for your voice. You know, finding the right thing for your voice. It doesn't. Maybe you're not trying to sing runs. Maybe it's just like cool spoken word stuff. Maybe you can sample yourself doing things. Like start with things that allow you to create a small momentum that build into an avalanche of confidence. I get that. Thanks. Yeah, man, it's good. Lin Linda B. <coughs> Um, yeah, if you guys have like, if you wanted me to check out music and call you up, just share the, the link in the, the chat. Sorry, but... I was muted. Um, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's good. Hi, Linda. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you. And thank you for having this. Oh man. It's my pleasure. Thank you for being here. My question is, um, is, um, I I I was inspired to to sing a while back, um, and I've taken a number of years of vocal lessons, and as time went on, you know, I get older and all that, and 
made some bad decisions. Mm. And now, you know, my body is starting to fail me because I'm getting older. Mm. And I just want to know how, you know, as an older person, um, do you think it's worth even proceeding mm. or should I just think of something else to do? Oh, Linda. First, I want to say thank you so much for your candor. Thank you for sharing. I I do, I feel, I hear the pain in your voice. Um, we're with you. I mean, if you 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 can already see the flooding in the chat of just encouragement of people already in this community, just people here telling you, stay at it. Thank you so much, Linda, for for just the vulnerability, uh, for for being here and um and for allowing me to just be a part of speaking into your life and and the many others who are doing that right now through chatting and encouraging you i i i am um, i'm honored to to be able to do that for you um let me let me get to something cuz this is deeper than this is way deeper than just you physically being able to create music why do you think you're no longer able to express who you are as an artist through your music? Oh, that, that stems back to, you know, now I can remember my mother was a seamstress, you mm. know, on the side, if you will. And I remember, um, I must've been, 13 or 12 or something. And I just, and I've seen her, you know, I've seen her sew stuff and make dresses and make dresses for me and my sister. And I walked into the sewing room and said, I want to be a seamstress too. And she said, no, you don't. Didn't take a breath. Mm -hmm. It was just like two comes after one, you know, and, and and it just just knocked that down, and and um, you know just just not being heard, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I also wow. Yeah, these these. Music is so powerful because we're expressing so much of of life we lived. Um, and if life we lived, if there's scars in that life, it, it those are notes that are hard to play. Those are notes that are hard to play. Those are notes that are hard to sing and share. Um, Linda, uh, there's even some people in the chat even expressing, "Hey, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm old too, uh, and, and I'm, I'm doing it." Uh, it was, it was Jan. There's a couple people saying, "Hey, I'm I'm well past the age." Um, I'm I am so sorry. I don't want to be little. I don't want. I, I, I'm so sorry for that. Uh, those hurts and and those moments that have caused you to have notes that can't be sung. I I would take the time, Linda, to sit with those pains, because oftentimes that will be the most surprising means of inspiration that you will be able to share out with the world that will resonate with so many people. I'm sure there are so many people who are on the verge of wanting to give up because so many people have told them they'll never amount to anything. There are so many people who are willing to throw in the towel because they think that their opportunity has been long gone and no longer can they pursue the passions that they've been dying to do for so long. You will be that voice, Linda, that will sing into the hearts of many people. The thing is, you're you, we often put a pressure on ourselves to have it just right when all we need to do is just sing a song or play a melody or put down chords that resonate with you and it will auto automatically just resonate with those listening to it. So I'm giving you permission to sing 
go and do it. Like there, there ain't no stopping you. Cause the, the question is never, am I too old to do this? That's the wrong question. The question is, why do I feel like I can't do it? Okay. Okay. Tony, but yeah, Tony Bennett. I mean, there's so many examples, so many examples. So I know that I know what you're coming at. I know the question is, hey, do you think I should keep doing this? The question is, yeah, but, but we, I want you, Linda, to take time and really work through the reasons why do I feel like I just, I can't do it. What's tripping me up emotionally? Because giving you the green light to go, yeah, you should do it you're still going to walk into doing it with that mindset. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you're still going to put roadblocks ahead of you because deep down inside, you feel like you can't do this. So you'll have me tell you, go and do it. You'll log off this call. You'll start to write a song. And then tomorrow you're going to fall right back into, nah, I was, that was a waste of time. I shouldn't have done this. The freedom you're going to experience is taking the time to give yourself insight and realizing why am I so emotionally tethered to the fear of not creating the music that I'm passionate about making? Does that make sense, Linda? It does. It does. I am so grateful for you. I am so glad you were here today. I am, I am, I mean, this was just a blessing to have you here. So thank you for sharing your heart. It's an encouragement to so many of us, especially me. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. 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 Woo. Oh man, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, this isn't your typical YouTube tutorial. So uh, <laughs> this is good stuff. Um, yeah. And, and reach out, Linda. Like, please take advantage of all of the resources I, I put out on YouTube. Um, I'd love to give you access to, by the way, guys, I'm, I'm migrating all of my courses to a platform. So uh, those of you who have bought courses, you'll have lifetime access to it, right? Uh, if you want what you've spent on beat academy to get credited towards mentorship sure we'll talk about that apply email me let's let's talk um but if you're just new and you're like man can i have access to the courses yeah i'm gonna migrate so linda i i, I want to give you a feast right just just sit there and eat and drink and just grow and let that be just a service to you okay um wow 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 that was good. Um, is there a, a, anybody? Let me see. I'm going to take a moment and listen to listen to something. Is that okay, guys? I'm going to hear a, a track. I know somebody sent me. Uh, Derek sent me some. I got to go back way up. Sorry, guys. The chat is going. You guys are awesome. By the way. Thank you so much for the encouragement towards Linda. This is a... Uh, um, wait. Oh, gosh. I lost it. All right. Um... Ma, Ma, do you have do you have a link to your music? Uh, Ma, let me see. I, Derek hit me up with something. I just lost it in the chat. It was it Derek or some somebody there? By the way, is this helpful, guys? Are we are we cool to just do this like once a month? You guys, you guys open to this? You can just give me a head nod. Yeah. If this totally sucks, let me know. Because <laughs> like, ah, now nah, I'm not really into this. Um, I'm not into just doing deep heart surgery <laughs> and figuring out why I can't uh, succeed as a musician or an artist. All right, uh, let me get to Nino real quick. We're gonna we're gonna check out Nino. Yeah, H hold on, guys. If you could just mute your mic, let me just share the screen. Um, I, we got it. Hold on, I got a track here from. Jim was at the laundromat when he heard what the crap is happening. Zero said maracas. All right, forgot to log in again, and so while that ad is playing, <laughs> um, I think I have a track, El Nino. Yes. All right, cool. Where are you? I'm in Slovenia. Oh, great. A small country, like I said. Uh, first hey, time... there you are. Yeah, there you go. Hey, man, good to see you. I, yeah, because I. Yeah, I couldn't recognize you. Good to see you, man. Thank you very much. Good to see you too. And thank you for what you're doing because it's really like, how to say, inspiring and motivating. Yeah. Oh, my my pleasure. My pleasure. All right, let's check out this track real quick. Um, thank you.
hold on. I think it's coming in mono. So let me just, are you hearing the music? No. All right. And you should be hearing it now. Yeah, it's not with... My dear, one and only love I wish we could fly like it just from above Holding each other's sands, running free and dancing The harmony like no one else It never ending kissing While our souls will be healing Cause our hearts are bleeding, beating Oh, how crazy is this feeling I feel I'm not only dreaming for you And I made it for a new beginning my heart So, hey, Nino, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, let me ask you, man. Where do you, where's your head at with the song? Where, where, where do you think it's at so far? Um, it's a love song. It's like written to my to to someone that I feel that I will meet in my future, like a twin flame. Okay. Uh, where and... where do you what do you think about its current state? And what do you think it needs to get to where you desire it to be? Uh, um, I don't know. This is uh, this is exactly exactly what I want to ask you. Why? Uh, um, <laughs> because you're like someone you know who knows the things, and I'm someone who is still learning. Sure, sure. I understand that. I, I guys, just press in here. What do you think this song needs for you to release this out to the world? Just release it. Well, well, let me let me ask uh, Nino. What do you specifically think, in your mind, will declare this track ready for the world? Um, I guess uh, my my pronouncing, because like I'm not a native speaker. Okay. Uh, Maybe when I'm rapping, uh, people don't understand everything very well. This is what I'm thinking, that I should be, be uh, more working on uh, speech. Okay. What and, else? Uh, I'm not sure. I put a little bit uh, a reverb while I'm rapping. And some guys told me that maybe it's better without reverb when you rap. Do you like the reverb? Me personally, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, till when someone didn't say it, I, I, I was never thinking about. Ah, okay. I the, song the way it was, but when I get the compliments and critics, then I start to analyze. Okay, maybe it's true. Why? The... Yeah, 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 yeah. You see what we're doing here, guys? Right? You see what's happening here? I, I, first of all, by your own admission, you've discovered that you want to fix the timing on your rapping. You want to deal with some of the, the reverb on the vocals there. What I'm trying to do, Nino, is I'm trying to release you of the necessary need to have me validate the art you're creating. Okay, yes. I need you to grow as the artist you're meant to be and not always say, okay, Ill, can I take it out of the oven now? I'm I'm going to help you. We're going to get into some of the technical things, but I need you to arrive at a place where you now know with just some common questions that I've just walked you through that you can now start to, I'm trying to teach you how to fish and not always come to me for the fish. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Thank you. How do we do that? Well, we <laughs> we ask these questions, we give some insight, but I'm also 
we need to dig into the reason why we make certain decisions with our production. Yeah, could could the mix be a little better? Could we can we adjust the kick? Could we can we change the reverb? Could we do? Yeah, we're gonna get to that. But before I prescribe that to you, you know what's gonna happen? If I told you right off the bat, change the EQ on the vocals, get the timing that you're gonna run to that, you're gonna fix that, and you missed out on the opportunity for you to ask those questions yourself. That helps mm -hmm. you navigate the next song you do. It's like, wait, wait, I, I, I need ill. I need, I need ill to tell me what, what? No, no, no. Yeah, this is, uh, this is true. I'm not uh, how to say self confident about uh, my right. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, enough. Yeah, man. Yeah, you got it. You got it. You know, I, I would focus on your. You have good instincts. Go with those two things. Start working on the timing on your vocals. If you want to remove reverb, see what that does. Make the decisions that you're decision. Let the decisions you're making with your music be motivated by the feeling that you're getting from it, rather than this video told me I should do this. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. You guys are walking away with. Yeah, it's you. You're making the music, and it's subjective, right? And I get it. There's a technical layer to like, yeah, but it doesn't sound as good as Twenty One Pilots or all these things. Okay. We're going to get there, but you need to grow as all of us here. I'm thinking of like, you know, Joel, Eric, uh, Mohad, Afro Mike, all of us here. We need to grow in our convictions behind the decisions we make. Mm -hmm. Or else we're going to be stuck on this never ending hamster wheel of what do you think about my music? Right? Mm -hmm. This is, a, this is a lot of the stuff that's going on in the mentorship calls that like uh, people are like, okay, what's, what snare drum should I use? I don't know. I don't care. And they're like, what? What do you mean? You got to tell me the right snare drum I've been using. Who cares? Why do you think a snare drum is going to solve your problem? And they're like, say what? So like, that's what I'm more excited about, guys. I'm more excited about that stuff because that's what's going to give you the... I'm trying to help you... I want to teach you how to learn, not tell you what to learn. Yeah? Okay. So, yeah, man. Go follow your instincts. Make those adjustments. The timing. Okay, now I'll tell you some of the things. Yeah, I thought the timing of your vocals could be, you know, could be fixed. Um, you know, work on that. That's the main thing. That's the main spotlight. And if you need more things to help you identify, that's where reference tracks can really be helpful. Put the reference track in. It's like, okay, when I listen to that track and I compare it to mine, what's what's missing? What's in the gap there? And then when you start to identify those things in the gap, you've given yourself a compass to navigate through and how to get to where you feel the track needs to be. Does that help? Does that make sense, everybody? Thank awesome. You very much. Bro, it is my pleasure. Thank you for being here. Uh, again... There's a link for that message. Um, let me see. Uh, I hope I'm saying this right. Mod, mod, M O H D, mod. I'm not even gonna try to get your middle, last, and your your other names. But can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, buddy. How you doing? Sir, uh, good, sir. Uh, I have some uh, problem. I started the music from uh, 2015. From uh, FL Studio Mobile. After that, uh, I purchased my PC. After that, I started DAO uh, Ableton. And after that, uh, I produced some music. I don't know any theory, but I will produce uh, by uh, music hearing quality and uh, some uh, basic theory. I I want to know, uh, I uh, uh, produce uh, one track called No Gaflat by Nazi. I rebuilt that track, uh, techno and uh, drill beat fusion. Uh, I want to know you can guide me where I uh, I was better and uh, what I will learn. Okay, uh, you gotta forgive me, man. I'm trying. I, I'm trying to decode the, the the accent and the dialect a little bit. So you need what's what's the question? What you need guidance with? What exactly? What what a problem in that in this track and what I I have to learn. What okay in future. What Produce, what's a problem with the track? Okay. Uh, I want to give you from you, sir. Okay. Yeah. Did did you I, post uh, the, the link in the chat? 
I uh, shared that uh, track in the chat, sir. Okay, like you just uploaded Project, it. Uh, okay, I got it. I got it. Okay, let me let me let me check it out here. Yeah, if you can, um, because it's gonna open up somewhere else. So, uh, let me see if I can open it, and then you guys let me know if you can hear the music. I'll play it. Yes or no? What's that? No. Not hearing. Does the music play? Uh, now here. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think we're hearing it off your speakers. And... cool man it's a cool vibe um man it's it's so awesome like in in your language just the way you like the the the, the pronoun the enunciation the rhythm of is, is it is it hindi what's the dialect hindi hindi sir okay cool cool yeah man what what what's what what do you what do you need from me I want uh, some guidance from you, sir. What I, I have to yeah, learn? Yeah, yeah. I no, I get that. I get that. What do you think is missing from this track? Uh, some uh, space. Space. What do you mean by that? The uh, international uh, songs like Drake uh, and uh, Travis Scott. That that like uh, uh, I feel, sir. Some space is there, and uh, uh, music is very wide, sir. In my uh, produced music, uh, that is very... But okay, so I, you see, so I'm trying to help you guide, get, I'm trying to help you get to the right question. Uh, yes. Guys, uh, a lot of the times it's not, listen to my music, what do I need to do? You know, yeah, I'm trying to identify, are you looking for, because you're saying space, you want more space where like, so that the vocal feels like it's in a... In, in a in a yes, in a sir. cave like like reverb space yes, sir. Yes, sir. okay well you seem to know like you want space and you kind of know what to do to get space yes sir. okay so if you're yeah i'm i'm trying to i'm trying to stay away from telling you exactly what you need to do i want to help you identify how to ask the right question so you want space are you like travis scott and drake what what about yes. the Travis Scott and Drake record that you listen to that you feel is missing from this from this record? The vocal is uh, very tightly and uh, not uh, hearing that uh, perfect uh, clear voice. Sir. Okay. In that uh, tracks uh, they uh, they will use a very clear okay. music and quality music. Okay. 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 Why? What do you? Th what do you think? I, okay, I think I understand what you're saying. You you want you want the quality of your vocals to match the quality of vocals you hear with the Drake yes, and Travis Scott. Okay. Yes. Where does vocal where when does the vocal recording process start? You guys can uh, answer that in the chat. But when do you think the vocal production starts? I, uh, uh, after the uh, audio interface and uh, the indoor, we started recording. No. Vocal production starts here. Before you even hit the yes. record button, it's how you deliver your vocals. Yes. If you If you think vocal production starts when it's recorded, you've already started late. Vocal production starts with the way you deliver the vocal in the first place. That's why you can have someone sing into an iPhone and transfer that recording yes. to a DAW and it could be Adele doing it or it can be a dying cat. But the person who has convictions in the way they want to deliver the vocal lifts that does 80% of the work. So if you're looking for Travis Scott, Drake swag, it's Drake and Travis Scott 
that have the conviction yes, in that performance that put it down, right? Yes, yes. So you, we have to understand the vocal production doesn't begin after you record, because you're looking for like, hey, what's the EQ I should use? What's the compressor I need to be using? What's the reverb I should use there? Those are byproducts. Those are things that are, those are tools people use to, to spotlight something about the performance that they want to spotlight, right? Yes. Does that make sense? So I know this sounds like a foo-foo answer. I'm not trying to give you guys woo-woo and, and, and like, I'm not trying to give you that. I'm trying to really help you identify, because bro, if I gave you the quick, use this EQ or bring up your vocal, you walk away with like, I don't know why I even did that. I'm doing this yes. because it'll tell me to do it. Right? Does that make sense, guys? No. So I think if you feel confident, I, I would look, I would do this. I, I didn't hear anything crazy about the record. Maybe just bringing the vocal up a little bit so I can hear the vocal a little bit more present. But I want you to really walk away with this conversation knowing that, man, if I want swag on my record, I need to be I need to be oozing swag on my performance. The uh, problem is that uh, I had no inter uh, audio interface and uh, okay. I, 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 I had no studio monitors. Uh, okay. I, uh, I was hold recording. On, hold, on. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold yeah. on. I want you guys to hear this. So you had no audio interface and you had no studio monitors, but yet that's what you created. Yes, sir. That's amazing. That's amazing. Stop there for a moment. Your your resistance is saying if I had more gear, I have better music. You see you see where your yes, your thinking is going? Yes, sir. Your mind is set if I had an op, if I had better gear, I will create better music. Is do you think that's true? Yes, yes sir, this is true. Okay. Okay. Then you didn't need me to give you an answer. What you needed to do is get a discount to Sweetwater Music and find another interface. Yes. Yeah, I, I'm not trying to be rude, bro. I, I know there's, I know culturally, you and I are in different worlds. I'm a Cuban Puerto Rican. Here's a Cuban Puerto Rican telling you, like, don't get an interface. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know culture. I'm not, I'm not being rude at all. I'm actually just giving you a little bit of tough love, but I'm trying to let you know that if you believe. If if the if what you're the truth you're sinking into is I need better gear to create better music, then you'll always be as good as the gear you have. Yes, sir. And uh, I think you, I, I, I need... think you have more. I think you have more potential than just an audio interface. Is where I'm getting at, buddy. I can uh, even uh, uh, improve the vocal from the this. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, this I think so, but I. Rather than, and, and we'll wrap up here in a little bit. Uh, I think rather than just telling you, yeah, bring up the vocals a little bit, I, I want to help you walk away with knowing, okay, I'm not, my music isn't the sum total of the gear that I'm using. There's room for, there's room to have nice preamps and great monitors. There, there's, there's, you mature to that. You mature to yes. that level. Even guys who just so happen to have a bunch of money and be like, oh, I'm going to spend thousands of dollars on studio gear. They they don't have the conviction of knowing why they even made that purchase. But if you can keep cranking out music like the way you just did with no audio interface and no studio monitors, bro, go. Like you're doing it and keep doing it. You're you're kicking butt. I have learned so from uh, something from your uh, video, sir, uh, in the YouTube. Yeah, keep doing it. Keep learning from me or other people, but you're you're doing great, man. Just keep keep at it. But I think what's stopping you is you, not not yes, the gear. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, I, I'll mute there. Um, we are so we are so much in our own way. Does that make sense, guys? I'm looking at Eric, Juan, and like we get in our way so much. Like that statement this guy just that that you made, uh, Mo. I, I'll mute you now of if I had better gear, I make better music. I think that's something you gotta take time. Don't, don't, don't come to that answer yet. Like, I want you to think to yourself, why do I feel that way? Why do I feel like I need better gear? And if it's like, well, because my, my, I'll give good example. 
if you ask that self, if you ask yourself that question, why do I feel like I need better gear to make better music? And if the answer to that question is, well, my my audio recordings are crackly, they're distorted, I keep hearing you know people coughing in the background. Got it. That is a very technical answer. And yes, better interface and a better environment would do better. If the answer to that question is, well, I don't really know. I hear other people telling me, and that now, do you see the difference between those two answers? One is actually being led by a technical result and the other is actually being moved by something else. So uh, let's go to Joel, Joel Allen. What's up, man? Good to see you. What's Hello, going nice on? Adam? Hey, What's buddy. Up, buddy. Good, man. Good to see you. Yeah. Um, so my question is, uh, it's, it's kind of general, but this is that era where uh, okay, so I come from I come from a band background, you know, we know because you know we've been we were in band together. That's where I know you from. Um, but that kind of made me a stickler over the years, I guess, uh, overthinking certain records and being extra technical. And then now we're in the era where these kids are just going for it. They're recording in the bathroom, like you said, at the grocery market with avocados and and whatever. And come on, if man, it, if it vibes, it vibes. You know what I mean? So I'm thinking. Now I have so many records. I have thousands of records over the years, and it's just content that I'm like, I I feel like I should be using it, even if it, even if it's for TikToks, if it's for whatever little thirty second clips of the hooks and things like that. Is is that something you think should be done? Because um, I know w with copyrights and all those kind of things, I'm not I'm not sure how this how this internet world works with all of these things. And and to be quite honest, that's what I'm trying to get a grasp of right now. What's your goal for doing that? Why do you want to do that? Um, to gain what do you traction. Think? What do you let, to, let, to, to, okay. I, I believe because sometimes, okay, in this era of the internet kind of things, a lot of people are falling in love with the journey for artists, songwriters, or whatever. So that content of them even just seeing you create and um, all right, but stop, stop there. What's yeah. the journey? What's the journey? Because right now, the journey that you're describing to me is dumping all my previous stuff on on the internet no as as a part of just um an element of picking up traction just uh, uh as people hear music gaining uh fans gaining uh even more business um okay you yeah. know things of that nature just for people to kind of hear the vast array because of you know there's a lot of times when you create in hip-hop people think it's just hip-hop you create in r&b they think it's just r&b and I, whereas i have a I'm very versatile just because of my my musical background. The things that I like listening to. Um, okay. Yeah. So I create in all kinds of spaces. So, what's the question, bro? Like I heard what the other guy was asking earlier, where he was talking about the two genres basically, or dropping one and dropping another. So I'm wondering, is that what do you think about that? Like, what do you think about the um, like putting content out, like the different kinds of things, the TikTok clips, the whatever it is, me in the studio recording or doing a writing session or doing whatever. It's like I'm, I, I haven't been doing music for a few years after doing it for my whole life. And then it's like now, now I'm just kind of starting from the beginning. I have the talent, I have, I have the know how in that regard um, as far as creating, but it's a matter of um, the steps to like what to do with this wealth of, you know, <laughs> With my bag, basically, my bag of music. What do you want to do? <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I, know. I, I want to monetize it. I'm, I'm trying to monetize it. So, therefore, um, okay, you know, uh, like I was, uh, I'm not, to you. I'm not, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying, you know, you know me, Joe, I'm not trying no, to I be get like you. that. I get you. But look, man, I'm pressing you because I think when you get pressed, when you get challenged on your reasoning, you right. dig deeper into understanding the why behind it, okay? It. So you're saying, I wanna monetize, I wanna create another channel of revenue through making music, writing songs, I wanna be able to put myself out there in the world so that they can see my talent, see the value that I bring to the table, and then start an, uh, a conversation about that, right? Right, yeah. Okay, then yeah, then just do exactly that. Yeah, I get it, I get it. Again, yeah, and yeah, because what what it would what it would sound like wisdom would be I think sometimes what we're, we we conflate with what's the strategy in 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 doing that as opposed to should I be doing that? Right. Those are two different things. 
right? Like, yeah. what's the strategy? Should I post once a week, twice a week, five times a day? Should I grow cabbage and film it? What 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 do I do? I'm like, I, you know, right. it. Yeah. But then it, it ties into what do you want to do? Is it is it now? But you mentioned you hit it right on the head earlier. It's like people are excited to be on the journey. But what journey are you on, Joel? Like, you you need it. You need to take time to figure that out too. It's like, hey, I, I'm. I'm a, I'm a songwriter, musician, artist. Music moves me in a way like it nothing else does, and I want to express that feeling with the rest of the world. Great. Articulate that core message of who you are as an artist and make sure that the content you put out is in alignment with that message. Got or it. else, okay. what's going to happen, Joel, is if you're just dumping things for the sake of dumping it, and you're like, hey, I can, I can do polka, and I can do reggae, and I can do all these things. Now it's just like what's the alignment here? Are you trying to be, you know, hey, I can make music for you if you if for all your karaoke needs, or is it I'm a musician on a journey and I want you guys to follow me on that journey? Then make sure that everything you do aligns with that. Got it. Does Got that it. make sense, guys? Absolutely. The moment we fall into, look, what's up, Charles? Charles Miller in the place. Good to see you, buddy. The moment we fall into the need Look, the moment we get discontent of where we're at, we look on the other side of the fence and we're saying, what's working for that person? And maybe that's what I need to adopt in order to see the success that person's admitting. Does that make sense, everybody? Does everybody, anybody been there before? Me. Hello. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Then what we tend to do is adopt that person's message into our lifestyle or into our broadcast. And then we're walking away inauthentically with what we're trying to do. But what needs to happen is, Yo, I'm making beats. I'm learning how to make beats. Why don't you come along this journey? So you post, I'm making beats. I love it. Hey guys, I want to interact with you. But my journey, be, be very clear. I'm on this journey. I've always wanted to write music. I always wanted to produce. I'm excited to do that. And what that does is it lets people know on the outside looking in. It's like, man, you know what I've always wanted to do? Fly a kite in the, in the rain. I'm going to do it. You know, like you're now inspiring people to kind of get lost in that journey too. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah, that's good, man. That's good. Uh, er Arrow, uh, uh, bro, guys, give me grace here. <laughs> Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, man, got you. Uh, that was yeah. a good question, Joel. By the way, that was that was good. Thanks for asking that. No pressure. Right on. Hey, thanks for having you me. Please ask me to switch to a different app. Oh, series, series, not having. Us? Yeah, Siri's Sorry. got a question. Uh, I guess, or I'm, I'm just been listening to everybody else's questions, and I'm uh, trying to figure out like what exactly. What's uh, your question? Well, what is my question here anymore? But um, I guess you know I'm producing full time. Uh, yeah. I'm an entrepreneur, and um, congrats, man! That's awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm based in Finland, and and the scene here That's is awesome. you know obviously a lot smaller. <laughs> And um, kind of, yeah, what I really want to do is production um, and writing. Did I? No, I got you. What's going on here? Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, so so production is really, and songwriting is kind of the things I, you know, want to go for. But uh, especially like recently, it's there's been like some projects that's, you know, just backfiring kind of, and, and I don't know if it's because of, you know, what's been going on globally, you know, budgets are, seem to be super tight and, and then, you know, having a few kids and uh, all that, you know, so basically I'm <laughs> trying, I've been trying to figure out like, what are the things I can do as a producer kind of without completely losing my focus for for what i really want to do um so like what are the things like the side income flows that i could you know do with music for instance like uh, i would maybe like to learn more about the sync stuff and and mm -hmm. things like that i have a few projects like an instrumental project that i've been working on like electronic instrumental music and 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 also i kind of lately i've been wanting to just for my own create creative outlet i've been doing some like uh kind of like uk garage type of stuff and um, how's that been How, what 
Well, out of, out, out of well, all the things you're currently doing, sorry to jump in, but uh, out yeah. of all the things you're currently doing, what, what do you feel has been giving you the most, like what has been the most life giving for you as far as like well, the music, music projects? I think, that you've... I think the, I think the, actually the kind of the UK garage type of stuff that I've been doing, uh, uh it's been really, really fun, fun for me. And mm. But then, then I kind of started in the process, I kind of started to ask myself, you know, like, oh, kind of like, why am I doing this? Should there why be am I doing this? I should be yeah, doing should like be... tracks so that people can hire me to make money off of this, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can we pause there for a moment? I think that's a, yeah. that's a really big, big, big thing there. Oh, man. Um, anybody else can relate? Uh, I, I know I'm seeing like a bunch of links and stuff, guys. Uh, give me a moment and uh, like... Raise your hand if and if you want me to check out some music, just raise your hand. And if somebody's having issues raising, go to reactions on the bottom and hit raise hand. And when I come chat, if you want to check out music, I'll do that. But I want to talk about that because that's a that's a big thing. Oh, okay. Very very sorry to interrupt, but uh, there is no raise hand option in the reaction. So I've been in the meeting for about forty five minutes ish now. So okay. Like 10, well, 10, 10, yeah, buddy, hold hold tight, and I, and I know I know that now. I'll just put you on mute and um, bring you up. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, no problem. Um. It's wild on these calls, guys. But it's it's um let's let's dive into that. That's a big thing. So this notion of man, I love making UK garage. I love making this type of music. It's really life giving. It really taps into like why I got into making music in the first place. But then let's be real, Ivan. Let's be real. I gotta make a living, so I gotta go back and do reggaeton beats for you know the whole week because that's gonna pay the bills. Um, I get you, man. That's, that's the space I've lived in for a long, long time. It's like, t you know, my last nine to five job was 22 years ago. So I've had 22 years of going from feast famine, working on a project, got to do this, got to do that, bending over backwards, doing all this. Um, and so I know the feeling of like, man, I love doing this kind of music, but the reality sets in, I got to make this kind of stuff or do this to cater to that. I think it doesn't have to be a one or the other. What I've realized now in this season of life, it doesn't have to be this or that. It can be a both end. Because what gives you the most life ultimately overflows into the arena that you're going to use in your vocation. Like if you're making, if you're producing beats for people who need tracks for to, to work on or, or develop artists or outsource production, you will suffocate the life out of that if you're not giving life back into it by creating the uh, UK garage that you're doing, okay? So now this becomes a, a discipline issue of, all right, I need to find some outlet or some way where I am pumping out UK garage on a regular basis because that ultimately will feed and I won't feel so bad about having to produce X, Y, and Z for, for income. Oh, does that make sense? Yeah, totally. So... Give yourself that space period of being able to do it. And don't, and now here's the, here's the key question, guys. Here it is. You ready? Why are you feeling so guilty about making UK Garage? That's, that's the ultimate. It's not, your question isn't, should I make UK Garage? Should I pursue other, what are some other, I know you're asking me, what are some other lanes that I can make music with, with make money with my music? That's, that's not the question I want to spend time with you on today. The question you need to walk away with, why do I feel so guilty when I'm making music I love making? And then yeah, sitting totally. with that, sitting with that, and then getting inside, writing that out, like, man, why do I feel guilty? I feel guilty maybe because, like, if I'm spending time doing this, I'm not really chasing out money, and I got to put food on the table. Do, do you see the guilt? Do you see what's happening there? Your guilt and shame is suffocating the life of any creative outlet that you have. How, how crazy is that? So if you created an environment and space and bracketed time to say, you know what? Friday from one to four, whatever, no guilt zone, I'm gonna freaking bang out some, some UK garage. And, with, and I guarantee when you remove the burden of that guilt, you're going to make some of the best UK garage you've ever made. Because the little goblin in the back of you is like, bro, you shouldn't be doing this. You know, you should be working on that polka track that's going to make you money next week. Like, all right, mm -hmm. whatever. But get lost in that, man. 
And then you know what's going to happen? You start getting really lost in that tornado of creativity. You start coming up with this UK garage EP. You start doing some really cool stuff. You start posting it on the internet, similar to what Joel, what I was telling Joel before. You put it out there, and then before you know it, hey bro, I'd love to collab with you. I'd love to. I love UK garage. How much do you charge to make UK garage? Whoa, whoa, what just happened? And then it's like, now it becomes, I'm making UK Garage and I'm attracting people who also like UK Garage. And now I'm working with artists who want to be featured on my UK Garage stuff. And now it's becoming a one world ecosystem where I'm like, hey, yeah, I'll make a track for you. And here's the production. Here's the value. Bam. There you go. Do you see, do you see what I'm getting at here? Now, I don't want, I want you to be cautious and I'm not trying to paint a Cinderella story here. It, it may or may not work, but I know for a fact that if you can take time and dig deep into the why am I feeling so guilty about making music I love making, that's going to give you so much insight and such a, a nudge in the right direction. I, I hope you hear me with that. Yeah, totally. How does, how does that sit with you? Yeah, I, th I think, yeah, that's probably at least one, one of the root, root things. Yeah. It could um, be, yeah, there could be a couple things in there. Yeah. Granted, look, I, you want to talk about sync stuff, sync strategy, we'll get there, man. Like, I, you know, if you, whatever, like that's, that's, that's what I'm doing on this mentorship platform. Yeah. We, but I, I need to, we need to talk about those, those deep rooted stuff first. Yeah. yeah. Because you know, what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you, oh yeah, you should pursue sync and this is how you should pursue it. You're going to do that. And the moment you're doing that, that guilt is going to come back again. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm wasting time. I should go back to doing the thing that's making me the quickest money. Yeah. I think honestly, like um, just talking about it now, like <laughs> that's that's what I've felt. I mean, sometimes you just got to take whatever comes, you know, to pay the bills. But but I do feel like kind of the, yeah, what what, what are the things, what, what's the thing that makes, you know, you come alive? Um, what's the thing that you know gives you life uh, I, I i think i i'm a firm believer that that's probably the lane you should stick with yeah you know? buddy and yeah so. and there's nothing wrong with doing what you got to do to pay the bills please do yeah. not hear me on that don't go reckless abandon me like ivan told me to to not even do this i'm not gonna do it no no, no. listen you got bill you got to be show up to work in excellence if you got to make polka then you make it the best freaking polka track you've ever done in your life it, show up and do excellence execute on that what i'm saying is remove the guilt when you are in your most creative state because that will suffocate think about it if you're bumping out uk garage and you're and you're so like you come off of that high and making a track that you're really proud of it it won't bother you that much that next week you got to do some mundane tracks for production it just won't you're going to hate doing Monday tracks because it you don't ever get to do stuff you love doing. Bro, I give you permission, man. Go Friday. Just make some UK garage. Thanks, man. <laughs> Post it next <laughs> next month. I want to hear some of it. So yeah, get yeah. on you, man. That's really good. Um, uh, all right. Uh, I got Royal. Royal. Sinar? Royal, can you hear me? Are you there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks for letting me in. Yeah, buddy. What's on your mind? Um, yeah, so I am more specifically uh, into songwriting and I write songs and I'm trying to produce songs, but somehow it doesn't go according to what I vision, I guess. Yeah, you're and just a little low on your microphone. You mind just putting up the volume or getting closer to the, the mic, or the laptop, whatever. Uh, uh, sure, sure. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, yeah I'm more focused into songwriting, um, but I'm trying to produce songs, but somehow it's not going according to what I vision. And I don't know how to improve in that part. I, I didn't catch the last part. What what did you say? Uh, I don't know how to improve in that part of, uh, of songwriting. Uh, yeah. Okay. I don't know. Uh, producing, producing. Of, of so producing. I'll send you some links. Yeah. Uh, I okay. Think I'm pretty okay in terms of songwriting, but yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Without 
going to the to the to the link right now, um, I think we could we'll have a lot more impact in a conversation as to why okay. So you're you're doing songwriting. Are you trying right. to record and produce the songs that you're writing, right? Uh yes, yes. Okay. Okay. And so how long have you started how long have you been producing the songs that you've written? How long have you been doing that? Um I've been doing it for a pretty long uh I guess five years, five, 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 six years. I've been trying it, but then sometimes, uh, yeah, yeah. I've been what do you think is your biggest? Yeah. What do you think personally? What do you think is your biggest struggle when it comes to producing the music that you're writing, like your songs? Mm, I would say the uh, arrangements somehow. Uh, the sound selections, I guess. I don't know how to layer or something. Okay, that's that's okay. That that's okay. So great. Yeah. yeah, man. I think you you're already starting to see some insight as to like, okay, areas you need to grow in. Sometimes we can be, we can be a music producer for one for like, let let me let me say this. Give me a moment to articulate this, right? We we can be learning something. You know, I'm going to just abandon that. Let me just articulate it uh, literally. Um, yeah, five years of producing. It's it's not about the amount of time that you've been in producing music. It's just the amount of times you've been stuck in the same loop and not learning the lessons you need to, to grow in, right? And so, you know, I've been producing for 20 years, but if I've never learned the lesson from year one, I'm basically just repeating year one 20 times. Does that make sense? So it really comes down to like identifying and getting some more of that uh, the insights, like if, okay, sound selection I need to grow in, if the arrangements I need to grow in, um, what do you think is, I think some of the best ways to grow in those areas is using reference tracks. You know, I, I've preached that to the mountaintops, but opening up your your DAW, whether it's Ableton, Logic, you know, calculator, whatever you're using, um, and just loading reference tracks in there so that you can identify, man, here's some, what sounds are they doing? Let me compare my sounds. What's what's missing there? What are they doing in their arrangement? Let me compare that to my arrangement. Why am I taking so long to go from the verse to the pre-chorus? You know, the pre-chorus to the chorus and things like that. Ha has that been something you've been implementing in your production process? Uh, yeah, I've been watching your videos, and actually, I did join your uh, previous program. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, it's like uh, right right now, it's like uh, two almost three years. 3 a.m. over here. I'm from Hong Kong. That's why I can't really speak so loud. Okay. Because everyone's sleeping here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. I get it. Um, you know. Yeah, so I did join your program before, but then uh, it could not really, I mean, uh, it could not really help me because I think uh, your free videos were more useful to me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, so I, I, I believe it. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, that's that's I, why I'm, the, I'm sorry to cut you off. The, the, a lot of the free content I was doing, look, I'm going to be honest with you, man. Like a lot of the consulting I, I received in running an online business was telling how much of the little bit of the course can you give so that they can buy the whole thing. I'm done with all that. Like I really am. Like I, I'd even rather just like, here it is, guys. I love making it, but I want it to be a means of of serving you guys. Like I'll create a course and if it helps you, great. But that's why what we're doing now is what I'm really excited about because this is the stuff I can't tap into in courses. I can go right alongside you and mentor you and help you take some of these next steps, which is what I'm really excited about. So I believe it with like all the breakdown videos and all the stuff that I've been doing. So Royal, well, let's get back to the, uh, really quickly. So arrangement and things like that. Um, did you have a, a, a link? Uh, you, is, that, is, that, is that what you're getting at? Like, hey, can you check out and see where I need to go? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, uh, I, I sent you some, uh, I did send you a link. You know, yeah. Can you just post cool. it really quick right now? Cause I'm like lost yeah. in the desert of the chat and I forgive me guys. I'll come up with a better system for this, but for right now, um, yeah, just, just send it as, as we're talking now so I can just click it immediately. And cause even the, the DMS or like the direct messages get lost too. You guys cool to hang for like another 20 minutes or so? You guys good with that? 
before we start our underwater basket weaving. Greg says yes. All right, cool. Yeah. All right, awesome. Uh, Benoit. Don't worry. I, I wish I can stay here all day, guys. I love doing this. I, I wish I could, but um, I got a, I got a bunch of stuff. Uh, uh, actually, I actually have a session starting pretty soon. Um, oh God, reason. All right, did you sh did you sh share the link, buddy? Ah uh, yes, yes, I did. Uh, um, you can put in the Zoom chat for me. I'm sorry. I, I, not sure. Right, while you're doing that, let me um. You got it. Yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, I'm trying to find it in the link. All right, is is that it? Robert Robert snuck in. It's like here. This is his link. <laughs> here, play it. That's his. That's his. That's his track. I see you, Robert. I see what you're doing. Robert sneaking in with the with the. <laughs> All right, buddy. Let me um. Let me just let me move on while like while you get the link. I'll let me just yeah, sure, uh, sure, sure. um real quickly. Uh Kevin, is it Kevin Wender? Yeah, sorry to, I know you're like you're you're juggling at the moment, but you were you were you were rocking it over there. But yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, buddy, what's up? Uh what's up? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't want you getting fired from work. Yeah, I brought it to you two days ago uh, to Instagram. This um, um, bad speaking English <laughs> because I'm from Ukraine. And it's, got it. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, good to see you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, uh, yes, I have two questions. Uh, as we can uh, know, that uh, song is algorithm. Um, and uh, hit hit song. And, okay, hold on, uh, hold on. This hit... I'm 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 just trying to understand, and I know there's a language barrier here, so um, I'm trying to remember the conversation. So you're just trying to, you had you had a song that you wanted to check out and just right to listen to see what what was what was going on with that. Okay, uh, just uh, my question is how to get uh, the hit hit algorithm. Uh, because uh, because sometimes uh, you work on this algorithm, but uh, you don't have this what you want. Uh, algorithm or is that what you're asking? Yes, uh, algorithm. Uh, uh, sorry, algorithm. Sorry. It's various uh, pre pre chorus chorus verse two and uh, other. Understand how? Uh, no, buddy. I'm I'm so sorry, man. I don't. I don't. Mm. I don't. I don't know. Okay. Uh, okay. Anybody uh, else? Uh, what do you speak? What I, do you speak? Ukraine? Ukraine? Anybody else? Uh... Okay. Yeah. Uh, I I can uh, second just uh, ask you uh, question. Maybe you understand me. Okay. All right. Let me let me meet there. Uh, okay. Uh, so... Okay. My second my second uh, question. Uh, it's uh, I made uh, music myself, and uh, when I'm uh, song, uh, first it's I record uh, instrumental. Also, after instrumental, I record my voice for demo, you know, and uh, after this, uh, I gotta change my instrumental and uh, always uh, after report my vocal uh, instrumental uh, sound a little a, a little strange and uh, okay uh, and uh, after this i gotta uh, try uh, more 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 time and uh, my project can uh, tune time okay. okay hold on let me see if i can interpret that really quick so you're recording vocals over an instrumental that you write or that you have, and you're just not, you're not liking the vocals the way they're sounding. Yes. Okay. Um, Y'all know what I'm about to ask. <laughs> Why? Why? No. Um, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it'd be, it'd be hard to hear it in, so, 
Let me do this. Let me let me play. Hold on to that. Let me play Rose. I'm gonna play a song here that he, that he's got. Um, if you got a link, just to hear it. But I also want you to just take some time thinking. What is it? What What do you think is the biggest problem with the vocal? Is it just that it feels? You know, is this like what Ethan is saying? Is it just like I don't like the sound of my voice, or is it like man, it's just it just doesn't feel like it's blended well with the. These are these are good things because this is also going to help us ask the right type of questions. Like if you come to me and say I don't like my vocals, and it's like what what do you want me to do about it? But if you say I believe my vocals are a bit too bright with the mix, how can I fix that? Like that's a very specific, and I can be okay. Well, let's let's say oh yeah, in reference and con in context with the mix, yeah, you could use an EQ to shave off a little of the high end, and your vocal will feel warmer and, and farther back in the mix. But when I when I'm confronted with, I don't know why my vocal sounds the way it does. I'm like, I don't know either. Like, what what is it? Because it is very subjective, and and people can be like, well, I I just I either and so it could even be a deeper. I mean, there was a one of the people on the mentorship program just was like, you know, I I want you to help me with my vocals, and I was like, okay, great. Let's let's look at listen to the vocals. What's what's the matter? I don't know. I'm not saying we ended up like opening up her session, looking at all the plugins, and we stripped all the plugins away. I go, what's, what's the problem with the raw vocal? And she was like, I don't know. And we got deep into like how she just didn't have any confidence in herself. And she was putting 14 different plugins on the vocal chain because she thought that's what needed and that's what she saw, and she hated the way the vocal performed. When we stripped it all down, she just has one EQ and a compressor, and she loves the vocal now. But it had nothing to do with the vocal chain. It was all about what, what was the obstacle in her way that didn't allow her to feel and connect with her vocal performance. So before I prescribe what compressor, what EQ you should use, we need to dig into the why are you struggling to to really embrace the sound of the vocal? I know we're going deeper, Kevin, and, and that might be a little hard to connect with the with the language barrier, but give me a second and maybe we can articulate that. Right. Um Royal, uh I'm gonna play Lovers Lovers Rough. Is that the one? Yeah. I know everybody's sleeping, Royal, so just blink twice if you're safe. Number, uh, can you, okay, uh, more, more of you. All right. Ripple. Blink once with your right eye at a 45 degree angle if you're safe. I'm, I'm safe. Are you guys hearing the music? Is the music playing? No? Ah, uh, poopies. Hold on, hold on. Oh man, oh, hold on. Let me just add this to zoom input. I need to add. Okay, you guys should be able to hear it now if I do this. Hey, real quick, Sonora, and what, yeah, 
where 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 is it? Why 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 haven't you put this out? Um. So, um, how to say? Um. Yeah, the arrangements. Some and sometimes it's kind of noisy or something. I don't. The arrangements kind of noisy. What do you mean by that? Mm. Uh, okay, some some of my friends says that they can't really hear my voice clearly, okay. or there's no uh, how to say, it? Um, you know, like when there's chorus, there's more impact. Okay, I think it's like something like that. Okay, so you just you just wrote down you just gave me two key components that if you were to get them fixed by your own words and your own mission, you can release this song next week or are there more for this song um i think i can release it but like for example lovers uh, the, the the one i shared no no no, no. stay others. stay 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 on topic bro stay on this song don't 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 move away from this because you see the common theme and, and guys, you see how, how a lot of us really can relate. If you can, if you can, here's what I want you to do. Walk away from this conversation with, okay, let me write down if friends and people I'm playing it can't hear my vocal, like write down and be as specific as possible. Three major things that you feel this track needs before you can release it next week. If you're finding yourself, well, I really don't have anything, then you need to ask the question, why am I struggling so much to have this considered as a finished record? And dig deep into that, right? I know we're doing a lot of therapy today, guys. I did, I'm not intending this to be that, that big of a therapy, but you guys can start seeing a lot of, do you guys see like a lot of common like denominators? Are you guys seeing how this is playing out? Like so much of the issues we're running into with our music is really us being in the way of our music. And a lot of the stuff, a lot of the stuff that plays into that, um, this is just stuff that you just won't pick up on YouTube tutorials because it's just feeding you what's the next solution you should be doing. Now, yeah, if you came to me and said, hey, I strongly feel like this track needs to be mixed because I want, it, I have an artistic vision for it and it's not there yet. I, I'm fully aware of my inabilities to get the mixes on my own. That's great. Then that, you know what you need? Just invest in getting somebody to mix it. Bam. But what that does is frees you from the need to always be the, I, now I got to produce it, songwrite, mix it, master it. And okay, if you want to do all that with your music, that's totally fine. But give yourself the grace and the runway to get mature at all those levels. I can, I can write, produce, vocal produce, mix and master and all that because I've got 21 years behind me to be able to do that stuff. But <clears throat> grow in the conviction of understanding when your song is ready to be done. And and so we're hearing this, and not just me, you got some people in the chat, like somebody was even saying like, it's good to go. So Royal, long way around the barn here is put together a specific, like three answers. What does this track need to be fully ready to go that I can take it out the oven and serve it to the people? What does that need? Does it need a mix? Okay, yeah, it might need a mix. Uh, the chorus needs to hit a little bit more. Be very specific. What do you mean by hit more? Does that does that mean you need to add something to it, or you need to take away before you need to take away an element before the chorus happens? Be specific, and then if you can't find a third item, guess what? You now just have two things you need to do for that track to go out and for the world to hear it. And that's your game plan. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Good. As I mentioned earlier, that. Uh, somehow the arrangement is going to be the similar in the second verse and chorus. So I don't know how to make it a bit different in that part. Why does it need to be different? Uh, 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 usually the songs has a bit of, you know, uh, there's some kind of difference <laughs> in okay. the first and the second one so that you know okay. people won't get tired of listening to it. Well there you go bro your Usually. answer your your answer you're doing it. You're now you're starting you see what's happening here you're starting to realize 
okay, my verse, my, my first verse and my second verse are sounding way too the same. For me personally, I feel like I should change it up. Great. Then that's your third item on there. I'm, I can, t look, if I'm going to tell you, I'm going to listen to this, I'm going to go, yeah, yeah, man, let's, let's change the melodies. <clears throat> For the sake of time, I'm not going to go that deep on the call, but <clears throat> I would, I could go with you if, if you're like, man, look, here's the best, this is what I got from my verse melody. I need help in, in getting this thing to sing the way I want it to. I want to, okay, now I come alongside you and help you get to where your desired outcome is. Does that make sense? But if you're giving me, if all you're giving me is like, is it ready? You tell me, is it ready? What What do you think this track needs for it to be ready? Do, do, does that make sense, guys? Like when it comes down to articulating very specific needs, it's like, hey man, like my drums don't pop. They're not really hitting hard. Can you help me with that? Sure. Let's dive in. Let's open up the hood. Let's see what we got working with. I'll go in and I'm going to come alongside you and I'm going to help you get those drums to meet your vision. But what I don't want to do is, oh, your drums don't pop? Here, let me help you. Let me fix it for you. Bam. And then we miss completely on giving you the essential foundation to stand on so that the next time you're working on your, your drums, on your music, you're like, I now know how to arrive at getting the drums the way I want them to. That's what I'm trying to connect here, guys. That's why it's so important uh, to kind of see it in this, in this lane. Um, super xbs and then uh oh, yeah and then i got so, I, i've got david I, I got david across and juan navas left uh, next so giving you guys a heads up uh okay so i i have a question and i'd like to show you a track as well if that's okay like a um, part or something yeah is it in relation to the track itself uh yeah sort of so my question was that uh i I've been producing for around maybe two to three years now, and I'm not quite sure what I'm doing because I don't really earn yet. So I can't really afford a lot of the good plugins or stuff that I want. And I produce a very like niche genre. Mm -hmm. So I can't find a very good audience as well for my music. And uh, a lot of my friends that I introduced music to they have started like selling their stuff and earning and everything because they make a much more mainstream genre but I can't bring myself to get bring make those genres because the process is not enjoyable anymore and uh, it, it, it just loses the value basically of the music so I was uh, wondering if you could give me some guidance of places you could recommend where I can expand myself in terms of like content creation and in a business aspect yeah is there any like sites i should target any particular demographic how how you suggest to grow as an artist yeah this is this is a this is a really good question um this actually is tapping in a little into what euro was was referring earlier like you've got a style and genre of music you love personally creating right yeah and then it's called complex row have you heard of it yeah yeah boy i've been down with complex row before it was complex um <laughs> so yeah yeah um all right so you're doing complex row great now the what's the heart of the question is you've got friends or you've got you know you're seeing people on the other side of friends hey just make if you just make trap beats all day you can sell them at beat stores and make money right yeah Whatever. okay so the allure and the temptation is abandon the passion that gives life to you like we talked about arrow like Abandon the thing that is pumping life into your passion to even make music in the first place. Just, just, just hear me out on this. You're saying step away from the thing that is even driving the passion to make music to go and make music. Yeah. You hear what you hear what I just said? Yeah, yeah. Step away from the thing that's driving the passion to make music so that you can go and make music. If you invest more time in the complex row making it's going to overflow into the 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 making of any other genre that you want to make you just need to make sure that hey when i'm making these traps but you it's like you said it's devaluing it's taking away all the things so rather than trying to attract all those people who want to just buy trap beats look you're not going to be happy with cranking out the trap beats and then setting up the beat store and then trying to get people to 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 buy your 15 20 trap beats 
when I don't know, you might. I, I, it's really difficult to navigate that, but I very well know that if you're going to abandon one, the other one is soon going to disappear as well, right? Mm, so yeah. if you abandon the complexo music you love making, don't think that making trap music will last long. You're going to hate it. It's going to drive you crazy. And all of a sudden, you're going to walk away from that, and then you're going to be like, you know what? I'm going back to selling the trappy shop where, you know, uh, whatever, like the ShamWow, uh, you know, like you're going to just... Uh, you're gonna abandon that. So let the let the passion project that you have, let that fuel into the other areas. And then you're asking, okay, so then where do I go in the content creation? Well, first, if you double down on the complex show, I guarantee if you just announce to the world that's what you're doing, there's other people. Look, bro, you just proved it. I know what the genre of music you're making. I've heard it. And there's a lot of other people who have. And so you need to go into a room where everybody likes hearing the message you have to give. If you're in a room and you're reading off nutrition facts off pizza to a bunch of people who can't even have gluten, they just don't want nothing to do with it. Yeah. They're like, dude, why are you trying to give us pizza? We can't eat it. Yeah, but but if you go in a room and you're 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 wetting everybody's appetite with what you're serving, they're gonna turn around and be like, what else you got? Yeah. So you gotta sense. do the due diligence. You gotta double down. I'm like. Who let, right now? Give me three artists that have influenced you in the complexo uh, genre. Uh, Colbricks, MDK, and Sterizo. Okay, yeah, you know very well that they have a fan base. Absolutely. Okay, so let's think like an algorithm here. Okay, if yeah. you like so and so, you're also going to like fill in the blank. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Because you know who thinks like that? Apple Music, Spotify, and every other distributor that's going to pump your music out there. So if you're, tap if you're tapping into music you love making, and you know that there is already an existing audience, and you know the heavy hitters that even influence you to go in that lane have an audience, you're now riding the wave off of the, the, the wave makers that have influenced you. You're tapping into that. Yeah. And now you can do, you can even get into the world of like, I'm going to take pop. I'll get, look. I'll give you a, a page out of my playbook. Right, take a Miley Cyrus record. Let's let's who's who's charting today. This is actually I'm gonna. Everybody's digging like the Tate McRae greedy. I guess I'll do a breakdown on that this week. Right. Um, okay, take a Tate McRae greedy. Flip that because it's popular right now, and do a complexo record. And there you go, bro. That's your strategy. Do that every week. So like popular so remixes for popular songs is what you're saying. Start doing complexo remixes of popular songs and start building an audience that way. Uh, yeah, sure. And uh, there's the just I'll just post the LinkedIn chat for the thing I was asking. Well, let's let let's rest on that for a moment. Let's. I think oh, that's so, yeah, sure. I think that's a that's a big. I mean, that's a that's a big key to unlock a big door for you. Yeah, you know. Because we we went to strategy, but you also now realize, man, I this is where I need to live. I need to I need to double down on this. So let me just um let me just pause there, man. Um, sit with yeah, that. Yeah, sure. And I think that's it. That's that's some stuff to marinate with. Um, David, and then and, and I got Juan coming up. <coughs> Hello, um, hey man, how are you? Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again, bro. Yeah. Um, well, my question would be, um, I'm producing right now one band from um, Austria, from v um, Vienna. It's German one, so sorry for the language. Um, I'm putting the link here. Um, yeah, the question is like, we record the drums in a really shitty um, room. So I just took the overheads and, sample and trigger the um, snare and kick and everything. I'm getting there where I want to go with the sound but i don't know i'm missing still something and i don't know because i'm spend a lot of time with this song and my ears is like not hearing anymore what i'm missing yeah um yeah i don't know and the question would be also like how do you do this when you work like in a project for a long time and at one point i don't know i don't know if this happened to you like you i stopped listening like well to the songs i don't know if i explain myself yeah 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 
how do you stop hating the music you're making after like yeah, being this, in a hamster and wheel? Also, and also like being more objective because at yeah, one point yeah, yeah, it's a great, I, I, think that's I a have great listened question. to this song like a hundred times and I don't know if it's finished or not. And yeah, 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 yeah. buddy, that's a great question. That's one I start with, I, you know, the, the Mala Yerba record I did with Monsieur Perine, that was a yeah. freaking, a year long. Amazing one, by the way. Thank you, bro. That was a year long procession. And not that the track took that long to make. I'm in the session with Monsieur Perine. We did that in an, in two hours, but it went freaking a year like, oh, vamos, let's record this, let's do that. And I, by like, I'm real like ADD with that. So like, even after hearing it a couple of times, I'm like, ah, I'm done. So growing up objectivity with the music you're making, community is a huge aspect of that. Like getting a good close circle of two or three people that you just trust. Mm -hmm. That you're like, bro, this is something we're gonna, I just want your insight. Like, hit me up, you know, let me know, tell it to me straight, whatever. And that's the vulnerability and the trust factor coming in. Because we get so in the trenches, so happy we're like fine tuning the snare and doing all that. And then by the, you're like, you're, you're fried, right? Hearing it. So we'll, we'll practice that now. I'm going to listen to it and you'll be surprised of probably the amount of not how much heavy handedness you have to apply to some okay. of the changes. So... But does that make sense? Like, the yeah, real, of course, yes. This the is real big really, answer I, to that is just having people around you that you can trust. I really, tr I have some producers as well as, as, as a friends, but they are too, many times too cool to me. Like, oh man, this is really cool, and I'm like, yeah, you're my friend. I don't want you. Ah, to, I, okay, I don't want okay. To... Whoa, 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 slow down. Okay, let me go back to sharing. Okay, hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What? Okay, what's going on there? What's going on there? You, you just said I've got producer friends I trust. But when they give me feedback, I, I, I neglect, I just abandon it. Why? Because sometimes, because they are friends, I think they don't want to hurt my feelings. And they're always like, ah, this is really cool. I like it. And I'm like, yeah, okay. But this is not enough for me. I want. Okay. So you need to find a new to... audience. You, you need to find a new listening audience then. Probably. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. If I, hey, my cool. aunt, my aunt thinks it's cool. Yay. And I was like, well, maybe, you know, maybe you should. Maybe that's great. Your aunt can encourage you, but maybe get somebody who can who knows the difference between you know the snare drum and the kick drum, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, What's yeah. More yeah. 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 If your friends are telling you it sounds cool and you're desiring deeper intimacy in the 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 feedback, find people that you can trust for that. Yeah. This is true. And then and just shift it, and it doesn't have to be a whole crowd. That that's why I love like, you know, I, I'm. That's what I'm trying to do is just create people that are on this journey that I can mentor, but they also have each other to be like, nah, bro, like uh, they want to challenge you and they want to, they, they want to correct you, but they also there to encourage you. Like, man, you're, yeah. you're definitely moving. All right. Let's, let's check this. Let's, okay, let's check yeah, this. Thank you. Does that make sense, everybody? So yeah, hope that makes sense. All right. Um, let's listen to this. <laughs> Mit Depressionen sollte man sich's nicht verscherzen Ist hier irgendjemand noch emotional verfügbar? Es gibt noch einen freien Termin Um kurz nach zwölf Uhr Alle machen Yoga Alle fressen Joghurt Mach mich besser, schneller, fester, unerträglicher Wenn du mich richtig einstellst, stelle ich mich auch richtig an Alle machen Push-Ups Yeah, are you saying you love the push-ups? Is that is that what you're saying in German? I love push-ups. Yeah, well, yeah. The, 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 the lyrics are really funny. Like um, everyone makes cool, push-ups, and yeah, okay, yeah. All right, all right, all right. Now I know you don't have an objective head, but right now, currently, because all the buck stops with you, David. Like I can't release this. You have to release it in your head. What is stopping you from putting this out? From uh, well, this is now the production. Um, without the mix and in my in my head, 
I would put this to a mix engineer or try to mix it by myself. But I don't know, because it's not my project. When, with my projects, I'm, I, I'm actually more than, okay, I just do it and mix it and release this. Okay, but so this is something- I'm working this... for another band, I'm too, yeah. I'm okay, more, I, okay. Yeah. That, actually, that actually makes it easier. That makes it so much easier. Because if you're producing for another band, right? There's, there's your feedback. That's like a direct connecting to like, if you feel like you've gone, you've crossed the finish line with it, hand them the baton. Hey guys, okay. here we're at. And then, because ultimately they're the ones who are putting it out. So tell the artist, like what, here it is. And they're like, ah, oh, you know, I don't like about the vocals. It's too distorted. There, there's that dialogue. It's like, okay, I can, I can do another very, you know, this is what professional mixing engineers go through all day. Like, they're just like, not all day, but they can, they grow in their conviction to say, hey, here's what I took it. Here's where I'm taking this. Does this, does this articulate your artistic vision for the song? Yeah, yeah, we love it. We love it. Okay, then I'm I'm freaking out over nothing. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah, yeah you know. Then, yeah. So, so like if it's for another artist you're producing, yeah, you you create that dialogue. Give yourself some good boundaries too, because then or else this is gonna happen for like there'll there'll never be a perfect mix or a perfect anything. Of course. You know? yes, I can true. always look back to the earlier stuff I released, even on the future sex love sound with Justin Timberlake. Like, ah, we could have had that, but the reality is. It is, it's, it's a, it's a marker you plant, you, that's a flag you plant on the ground and you just keep moving forward. So yeah. Um, because there's two lanes of advice. I can give you personal preference and I can give you principle. You've heard me tell you this before. Principle yeah. where you're like, bro, the vocals, you're out of key, the, that thing's out of tune. There's some really crazy things you need to look into first. That's really way distorted, you know, or. My personal preference would have been like, I would go a little drier on the lead vocal and then on the, you know, or on the chorus vocal. But again, like that's preference and that's going to yeah. change. And it's not my say that's going to have, that's going to pay your bills. It's the artist that's going to ultimately say, yeah, I love it. Let's go. Yeah. But here's something yeah. guys, check this out. This is, this is, this is an insight when working and producing for other artists. Okay. This is, this is cheat code. 101. This is something I've learned. I think it took me about like 17 years to learn this. And that was if you don't have conviction behind the production decisions you make, the artists you're working with won't have them either. Yeah, this is really super. Fun. If mm. I go, if I'm always in need of the artist's validation for the production decisions I make, I'm not producing the record. Does that make sense? Yeah. I would always, so how do you like it? Is it okay? Do you think about, well, I don't know. It's like, but when I'm like, here it is, it's, it's freaking slamming, man. This is like better than sliced bread. You need to check it out. Wow. Like, oh, this is really tremendous. I was like, wow. Tremendous. Yeah, it, it, it is really good. I can show you the differences in two emails. One that I'm like, what do you think of it? What do you think it needs? And, and this is the, this track is so slamming. I love what it does to your voice. Like it brings you, man. I'm ready for the world to hear this. Yeah, the man, email, this is so important. Email that it's sends so that. I, I've done this. The artist that I send that email to, no recalls, no changes in the mix. The artist that I send the email with, like, what do you think? What do you think? I, bro, recall number seventeen. <laughs> just, just telling you how it is, bro. Yo, thank you very much. I think I'm, I'm, I'm I've been. Doing a lot, like, hey, I don't know if you like this, blah, blah, Yeah, then, yeah, this is really stop that, bro. One. This is, yeah, yeah. Stop that, really, stop yeah, that frame man. of mind. Yeah, you I'm gonna grow, grow in the conviction. You, you're a talented artist, you're a talented producer, and you need to grow in that. You don't need the validation of the artist. Who, they're working with you because they already see the talent. Yeah, man, thank you. So nice. <clears throat> Come on. Was <laughs> wollen Sie trinken mit mir kommen? Hi, uh, Juan. Uh, by the way, has, yes. I hope this call has been helpful for you guys. You can let me know in the chat. I know I didn't get to everybody's links. I'm sorry, but I'll create a, another. I'll do this again um, very soon. And But I hope this is an insight to just being a helpful resource for you guys. Okay, great. Um, What's up? Uh, yes, sir. Meeting the legend in person. Can you hear come me? Come on, bro. I'm meeting the legend in person. What's up, Juan? <laughs> 
Hey, hey man. Yes. Yeah, so I actually bought the breakthrough vocals a lot and not too long ago, and it has been really helpful. So yeah, I'm a music producer and musician based out of Costa Rica. And so, yeah, I've actually just wanted to reach you out right now here because I just wanted you to hear a track I've been working on. And I really wanted to submit it because I've been struggling really like comparing my kick and bass to other progressive house and electronic music records that I feel inspired towards making. So I'm reaching you out because I've tried like, I've tried everything, like trying to re resample the kick, trying to find the perfect sub bass and on my song. I don't know if it's because like, so basically I just wanted to, I just wanted you to hear my track and just wanted to know your thoughts on the on the sub frequency relation of my of my demo because it is a mix but i really wanted to like know so wait it, stop 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 you, you just told me it isn't mixed why it isn't mixed because i try to mix my own music what, is, what, what but... does that what does that even mean by the way oh it's my i haven't mixed it yet i i know it's it's the disclaimer everybody gives hey man check out this demo I, it's not mixed. It's not mastered. It hasn't been published. No, you know. I just, I just, I just. I know, I know, I know. No, 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 te preocupe. I, I know exactly where is it. Que parte de uh, you're in Colombia, right? Or Costa Rica? Costa Rica. I'm Costa Rica, Costa Rica. What part? San Jose. I'm actually oh. Nicaraguan, but I'm also Costa Rican too. Okay, so yeah, <clears throat> the reason why I asked the mix question is because we're trying to get to the root of the issue is it some is there a problem that needs to get fixed in the mixing stage or is it hindering your creative writing stage no it isn't hindering my creative writing stage because i already have the okay. song laid out i just like have trouble getting to the you know the the awesome rumble that electronic music gives so okay. every time that I try to mix them or try to find the perfect kick or sub, I just can't get it, man. I don't know why. Why? It's it's far easier for me to like to do it in reggaeton or or even in trap, but in house music, I don't know. So yeah, I just wanted to hear your thoughts on my demo. All right, send the link, and then we're gonna do some more therapy. <laughs> I hope not, man. I really try to be as <laughs> no, man. I'm kidding, but yeah. Yeah, post a link in the Zoom chat. Let's let's check it out. Oh, so I need to post a link. I, I actually posted in the group chat the web file. Um what's what's it's what, called what? down. In the group. down demo. Oh, in the community thing? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Well, do you have a link on Spotify or something like that? Because I can fast forward. All right, well, here you go. No, remember it's a demo. I haven't released bro, it. Bro, but listen, man, make it easier for let, let, make, come on, bro. Work with me. All right. Um so, nope, that's not it. It's uh down. I so shared this, it right now. Yeah, all right, I got it. Just give me a second because now I gotta Your main your main thing is the low end, right? The balance between kick and sub. Yeah, man. I don't know. It wasn't that big of an issue for me. I mean, I, I it could be a lot of the I think eighty percent of the issue is the the fight in your head. <clears throat> so let's start with this. <clears throat> Do you have a reference track in your session? 
Yes, yes, I do. Like in the actual project. Okay, what's... Yes, <clears throat> yes. When you listen to the low end on the reference track, how are you doing it? <clears throat> how are you comparing a, a apples to apples here? I try to lower the the reference master to about the same as mm -hmm. um what is it called? I forgot the name, like the master channel. Mm -hmm. And I try to compare it. And it's obviously it's obviously passed through a limiter, the, the master track. So um but yeah, I just try to lower down the the reference track to what I'm producing. And then just trying to zone out via the utility plugin in Ableton how the low end feels. Okay. That's good. <clears throat> how often are you just listening to the whole track in its context without just focusing on the low end frequency and just more on the overall mix of everything? My track or the reference track? The the reference track. Um I mean Every day, I, I don't know. Right. Um, it's hard to articulate some of the technicalities of this. Like, I can't, like, you know, it's surgically, like, hey, yeah, I hear a little bit of the muddiness. Because I'm not, I'm not consuming music and thinking of, okay, what's about, I, I'm, I'm, I'm consuming the whole picture that's being presented to me through the two track. When I hit play, I'm not going into an analytical, well, let's check this. I don't have a spectrum with me when I'm listening to music, right? Like, yeah. I don't have a frequency analyzer. I don't have my, you know, oh, let's check the LUFS. I'm listening to music. I'm letting it hit me. I'm letting it move me. And that's my first gauge of, that's my first, that's my first analyzer, so to speak. Like, if I listen to a Skrillex record, and if I'm listening to Rumble, and I'm listening to Fred again. I'm hearing that. I'm like, dang, that low end is good. But it's not just that the low end is good because I'm a technical nerd too with the low end and production. But before I go there, I'm like, dang, this freaking track has it's got so much bounce and fire and, and aggression. And, and I'm articulating how it's making me feel. And it motivates me like, dang, I want to write music. I, this gets me inspired like that. That's more the feeling of what the music is doing. And what we have to do is sometimes refresh and remind ourselves, am I getting that feeling across with the music I'm making, right? And so this is the stuff like, what, so like when I'm, when I'm in a studio with like a legendary mixing engineer, like a Jimmy Douglas, I'll tell him, well, shouldn't you cut the EQ at like 85 so that there's space for the kick? And he's like, I don't care, man. Like it feels good, right? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, that's all that matters. And I'm like, whoa. So you're telling me that if I focus on having the music feel the way I want it to feel, like I'm close, I'm close to the finish. Yeah. You know? So I'm hearing this. I'm like, yeah, there's not that much craziness. Could you clean up the bottom end? Sure, I guess. But in, in, in reference to what, right? You know, like, so as you A, B the mix, when you listen to your reference track, um, what I've stopped doing is, you know, look, focus on just the low end of the reference, listen to my low end, meaning like use a multiband limiter or a multiband compressor or just get an EQ and, and, and slow. You can do that stuff, I think, every now and then to give you some, some like more clarity. But when I hear my reference tracks, I'm like, okay, what's the feeling I'm getting? And then when I listen to mine really quick, does it have that same, you know, thing there? If you want technical, if you want, um, if you want some like technical like feedback, a great plugin is like the tonal balance tool from Ozone's Isotope. Like that's a great plugin because it gives you just the overall tonal balance and context of your whole song. And what I do with that is like, okay, yeah, this is lopsided. Like the bass is all dominating here and I might want to balance that out. That, that can be helpful if you're looking for strategic technical advice. And tonal balance control is really good for that. But don't go by that alone. Start with, man, how am I feeling when I when I play the track? Like, what's what's the emotion I'm getting, right? So basically, like, just to follow my intuition at the, I I really don't understand, Ivan. Honestly. Okay, it's okay, man. Sometimes it, again. 
that's the problem with giving immediate solutions is if I told you, Juan, here's what you need to do to fix your low end issue. I can give you a solution that you'll go to this track and you're, you're really fixated and you're, you're wanting to hear, what do I do for the low end balance to be right? And if I tell you, carve out some low end space, who do you want to be dominant? Do you want the kick or the bass to be dominant? Do that, which yes, you can do that. I'm sure, but you told, you told me I've done all the things. Have you done that? Yeah, I tried almost okay. everything. Yeah. Okay. So you tried almost everything. Why am I going to start wasting our time giving you more things to try? When we should first stop, hold on, hold on, hold, stop and then realize what are we using to analyze in the context of the song, right? I'm, again, I'm not going to go tell foo foo that it's all about like your mindset. We're, I'll, I'll, I'm going to anchor it to some technical stuff, but you, you'll be surprised how many times the mental fights that we have don't allow us to, to, to free the music that we're making, right? So your specific question, you came to me asking, how do I get the low end right? Low end right according to what? The reference track that I'm using. Okay. When you go to your reference track, like what are you using as a reference track? Um, do you want to know the song name? Yeah. It's called um, Clouds by Bond. It's a popular story house track. Clouds? It's called Clouds. Yeah. By D-U-N-T. Okay. When you listen to that reference track, and you hear it in its entirety, you listen to the context, what, what feeling, what vibe do you get? Even if you're doing it on headphones, it doesn't matter. What vibe are you getting with the record on the low end side? Is it, is it more bassier? Is it less bassier? What are you getting? Well, it's kind of difficult like to answer that because um, at the same time, I feel like it's somehow less or less bassy than my track but somehow when played it does feel like in the in the even though in the frequency spectrum might seem like less low end it does feel like there's more punch but when i tried to replicate that i just didn't get the same feeling Okay, so... your question is different now. Do you see what I'm getting out of here, guys? Your question is different now. You're, you, you're, you came from like, I need to balance the low end, but now when you listen to your reference, the feeling you get is like, man, I, it feels like it's punchy and how do I, you see how like, <clears throat> that's what I'm trying to get to is like, it helps you be specific with articulating what you're trying to solve. <clears throat> so if you want more punchiness, it could just be as simple as balancing the val the volume between the kick. Who's who's gonna be punchy? The bass or the kick for you? The kick. Um, I'm assuming the kick, right? Okay, great. Get the kick. Get it to the punchiness that you like, right? Take away some of the low end, and let the bass just do the bass and the low end. Remove remove some of the punchiness or that frequency there, and now just balance those two out till you arrive at a place you're like, yeah, this. This feels right. And then start bringing in the other pillar of the song, which in this case would be your vocal or your other, you know, start with the main pillars of your mix, your kick, get it punchy, your bass, get it, get it booming. And what's the most other important element of your song, your vocals, your, 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 your synth, whatever. Now balance those three pillars in place and fill in the rest with all the other instruments in the music. Your your question, your issue is not a low end issue. Your issue is I wanted the feel from my reference here. I wanted the, you see what I'm saying? Like the punch is what I was missing. And so you just needed to create that space to get the punch where you want and then blend everything else in mix. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. <clears throat> yeah. And I don't want to give you the, oh yeah, use an EQ and carve out 60 Hertz. That's what I'm trying to avoid. One, I'm trying to avoid using EQ, carve out 60 hertz, because you know what you're going to do? You're going to go to every single song and put an EQ and carve out 60 hertz because you think no, that's what's going to no, get. No, no, I'm not going to do it, man. 
Yeah, good. And, well, yeah. I guess that I'll try that, man, and see how it goes. But, but to give you, to yeah, to give you a little help, just even those who heard the mix and just hearing it here, like I was like, I ain't got a problem. So now you're, you now that's also you to wrestle. Like, okay, so is this all in my head? Like, is there something, you know, like what's, what are the three things I need for this thing to be done? Like maybe it could be, Hey, I, I can't get the low end, right? Maybe just let me have somebody try mixing it. Maybe trying somebody else giving, you know, like those things can be really helpful. The more you can just let go of things yourself, the much easier it's going to be for you to move on, you know, and growing as an artist. So I know a lot of times you were like, oh, well, no, I got to produce it. I got to mix it. I got to master it. But honestly, what does you the most service starting out producing music is oftentimes just inviting other people into the process because you're going to learn so much more from having somebody mix your record than you trying to solve all those problems because when, you, when he articulates, yes, that's what I've been trying to get from the mix. That's awesome. How, how, how was that? How would that artic Oh, well, I did this and I did this. Like, great. You know? Like, that's what I needed. And, and then, then you're growing from that and you start to learn, okay, now I can do this the next, the next record, the next things like that, right? So, yeah. Yeah, buddy. It's good stuff. It's good, man. Just, just keep moving. Um, okay, I got time. You, man. Yeah, I got to step out. I got time for one more. Let me get um, ben Benoit. Oh, man, B-E-N-O-I. Help me, please. Throw me, throw me a life preserver. Okay, it's actually a French name. It's Benoit, but yeah, Benoit, I used of to... course. I should have. <laughs> Benoit, yeah. good to see you. And I'm actually used to it. <laughs> hey. Okay, thank you. Um, I just have a question. Like, okay, actually, two questions. Uh, so you often hear in a song acoustic guitar, but it's like it. You only hear the strings and not the resonance of the strings, and it's not like it's just popping in and then going out. Uh, I actually asked here in the chat and someone said a uh, noise gate, but I don't know if that will really do it. So do you know, maybe? <laughs> yeah. 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 <clears throat> is this a, <clears throat> excuse me. Is this acoustic? Is, is it recorded? Yes. Is it like, so you're recording the guitar yourself? <clears throat> yeah. Walk me through that. Walk me through the process. Um, that's the thing. I don't know. You just hear it in a song, but. I have no idea how to do it. I I, I tried well, muting me... the strings kind of, but didn't work. Okay, well, yeah. Walk me through your walk me even through your thought process of trying to get the sound you're you're trying to get. I'd love to to see that. So you I got a guitar. To... <laughs> what's the, what's the microphone you're using? Where are you setting it up? How are you connecting okay. it? Okay, that's the thing. I don't have a good microphone yet, but you should technically be able to still get the same result or at yeah. least the same effect even if you don't have a good microphone uh, so uh, i would think maybe like if you add a lot of reverb and then damp it completely so that you only have a little bit of almost reverb but it's not reverb <laughs> if that makes sense at all but i also don't think that's gonna help so <laughs> i mean have you tried it i don't no i haven't i haven't recorded a uh, guitar lately but yeah okay. I i'm I'm curious to see, I'm just curious to see where your brain just roams and, and, and problem solves this. And uh, look, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say you figure it out. Well, what the crap was this, bro? I'm asking you to help me out. And you're no, 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 no. Like, but I'm, I'm also just curious as to like, where, where, where does the thought process start and how does it go into getting the results you want? So, and I'm, I'm actually, I just want to understand correctly too. So when you're saying like the resonance, are you talking like harmonics? Like when the guitar, like some of the harmonics no, are you familiar actually with? actually like. If you strum, you hear mm -hmm. single strums at times, but it, it's just like it's. I don't really know how to explain it. I actually I can send a link. Clingy song, is it like is it like example. brittle? Is it just like really like cling cling like really thin sounding? No, that's the thing. I don't really know how to explain it. I okay. can send a link here in the chat if that's okay. Yeah, just okay. go and put it in. Is that it there? Okay. All right, let's listen to it. Ah, uh, yes. So this is what you want to get, or this is. Is this what yes, you're striving for or is this the problem? Yeah, this is more like what I want to get. <laughs> I think you'll probably hear that from the first chorus. Maybe I don't think it's in the first verse though. There is a truth. There is a kingdom that forever reigns. Jesus, Jesus. Who walks on the waters? Who speaks?
Are you talking the the acoustics playing right there and on the on the the far left and right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, man, Chris Tomlin. Those Nashville yeah. boys don't play around. You know, like yeah. <laughs> great musicians. So uh, this this is exactly what I mean by the ingredients you use to bake a cake make a big difference, right? So amazing players, first of all, that's that's number one. Doesn't mean that oh great, well that that sucks. I, I don't. But it, you know, look, I think a guitar and that has an effect on what I can play and record. Okay, so uh, but if it's just basic strumming, straightforward, nothing crazy. Um, let's say. I think. It, do you have uh? Do you have a recording of the problem? That would that would be easier because these are just great sounding acoustic guitars. No, sorry, okay. I don't. <laughs> All right. Well, do you pan your guitars left and right when you when you double? Yeah, yeah I try that. Don't really think that's. It's not quite giving me that yet. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be hard to solve, man, without hearing the actual the actual problem. But let me ask you okay. this: What 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 do you what emotions articulate this? Let, let me when you hear the Chris Tomlin record, right? What and, and just using as 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 much as you can articulate. What do you feel about those guitars? Like what what do you what are you using any words? Like what are they adjectives? Describe them. Uh, I would I would guess they're probably using a platform. Uh, I don't really know. It it kind of feels almost like the strings are um, are. Very tense, if I can put it that way, but that can't be because then you're out of tune. So, <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, go to the sound. Go to the sound. Go to go like okay. In my in my in my. I'll, I'll, let me give you an example. Maybe this will help you out. Okay, so they're clean, right? They're not distorted. Mm -hmm. They're clean guitars. They're very. The, the strums are very open. They're a bit bright. Do you see what I'm words I'm using? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So right off the bat, bright. Okay. What tool, guys, should I go? EQ. I'm going to go with my EQ. I'm going to thin them out, brighten them up. So I'm going to take the high end, brighten them up a little bit. Is this not getting there? Okay, great. They're they're clean. So I'm going to make sure that I'm not distorting when I record them. Do you see what I'm doing here? Like I, I, I associate what I'm hearing with the tools to get there. It's like, okay. Um, Open strum, hear it, great. They, they're they huge, they're big. So that automatically means I'm gonna double them. So I'm gonna pan one hard left, I'm gonna pan another guitar hard right. That's exactly what I'm hearing there. They're very upfront in the mix. All those things play a role into hearing what we're hearing that you desire, That does, is that giving you that desire to achieve that sound. Does that make sense? Yeah, um, I think so, yes. Uh, it's just, now, now I lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, yeah. I can't remember what I had to say. No but okay, problem. Yeah, that sounds yeah. very nice. I'll try that. Uh, I just then have one more question. In this exact same song, it's like it's this massive noise, but you can't determine what's making all the noise because each individual sound seems pretty soft, actually, in the mix. I think um, soft clipping could actually help with that, but I don't think that's quite... Why? Why? Why do you think soft clipping is going to help with that? Because I heard an example when I was googling about it on a video, and it actually it made a big difference in the example. It's just the soft clipping on the master, uh, but okay. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it is soft clipping. Who knows? I like. <laughs> again, we have to be so careful with walking into. This is the magic formula that's going to fix everything. That that's not it. Like. Soft clipping is a method. It's a tool. It's something you want to use before going to limiting. You know, distortion could be good if it's if it's used purposeful. Like all these things. So, I think what what would really be beneficial for you, Benoit, is uh, did I say that right, ben Benoit? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is becoming more familiar with the grammar of sculpting sound. Right. So, I don't know if you have access to the Ultimate Producer course, and if you don't have access to the courses, like start figuring out the grammar like understanding what what does what's the difference between overdrive and and this type of pedal and and this reverb and and that and that like when you become familiar with the grammar 
like, oh, okay, EQ, that's shaping the tone. This compressor is going to help control the dynamics. You then now know, like, yeah, this thing sounds like loud or there's noise here. It could very well be that they put white noise in the actual record to make the chorus yeah. explode a little bit more. And if that's what, if then that's what you start to do. Oh, I'll put a little bit of white noise here and whatever, you know, but getting familiar with the grammar, getting familiar with the essential fundamentals of that's what this tool does. That's how I can use it. That then gives you wider range of opportunity than somebody telling you, yeah, it's soft clipping. That's what you got to do, right? <laughs> because now you know the tools to shape any situation, any circumstance, any desired outcome you are looking for. If yeah. I gave you the same exact formula that's like, hey, this is what Tom, Chris Tomlin used, and that's what the mixing engine, he used those tools because he's trying to get a certain desired outcome out of that. But that chain of command probably won't work for every song you're going to be doing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is really, really cool, guys. Um, thank you so much for hanging with me. Thank you so much for being on the call. Uh, wait, Derek, hold on. D uh, Derek, are you here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Derek, you've been trying to hit me the link. Shoot me the link, bro. What's up? Let me let me bring on stage and then I'll wrap up the call with with you. Can, can you hear me? Oh, can you can you hear me there? Yeah. Sorry, I was trying to connect on there. Yeah, 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 man. Yeah. And by the way, that. David, David, uh. uh uh, Alcros, yeah, bro, your mix is good, man. Go. Let me call back but you don't need chat. me to validate it, bro. You know the you know the deal. Oh, go for it. Is, here we go. There it is. Got it, got it. Sorry, man. The chat. The no chat's worries. Awesome. No, I mean, if I, I mean, it, it's okay if you didn't have time too. I mean, it's we've been on here for three hours. I appreciate your time. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, by the way, those of you guys who are interested in the mentorship stuff, like, there's the link again. Hit me up apply for it. I think it'd be awesome. I'd be looking forward to doing this on a weekly basis for six months. So that's something you're in. Let's, let's do it. So Derek, this is a record here. Let's just listen to it. But what, um, well, let me play it. Let me see if it comes through. Are you trying to get <laughs> Super cool, man. So where's your hat? Where where, where are you, um, Derek? Well, oh, there you are. Yeah, man. So where, where's your hat at with this? Um, well, I've, I'm essentially just trying. I've been trying to just make for the like few years. I I had like a like a live loop thing that I've always done. So I tried to do that in Ableton originally, and it was it's been quirky. I've been trying to do it for like five years now, but I fell in love with just making stuff in Ableton by just like following, you know, whatever it is. Maybe I start with a kick drum or maybe I start with, you know, a guitar and to have that, the creativity of, with my loop show, I always felt like I had to record exactly what I could do live. Mm -hmm. And so with this, I've just been like, I'm just following the music and fall. And I've been able to 
kind of get in like the words always come from what I'm feeling like almost it's like the scratch track ends up being my vocals on these. And so with this, I've never made a house track, but, and I don't, I usually the drum, it started with the drum loop that I was just messing with some plugins, adding some really cool, like, like these different textures and stuff that would come from the drums. And I was like, normally I wouldn't want to use a drum loop. I feel like I have to use my, you know, make my own thing from scratch. And, and I just went with it and being able to do that and get, just go with the flow, I think has really helped me just like I've, so with this one, I feel like I was ready to just put it out, but I feel like there could be some stuff to make it production wise a little better. Um, as most especially with my vocals, I feel like I'd like to get the trick of doing the gating, gating of my vocal reverb so that, you know, when I'm singing the, the reverb stops until I stop kind of thing. But okay. Yeah, so feedback. I mean, it's, it sounds like you got a, it sounds like you have a compass, man. You know where you're headed. Yeah, thanks. I, I mean, <laughs> I, you're starting to see a theme here, right? From the beginning of the call. It's like, yeah, um, it sounds like you, you got some good conviction on what you think needs to happen for this track to really resonate with you and those who are going to hear it. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, yeah, again, like, I, I was caught in the trap of always expecting to be the one who validates the, the music of the ones I'm mentoring. And like, yeah, yeah, it's good. Now, again, Preference, principle, yeah, there's some things out of key, whatever. I'm not saying that's what's in the track. But what I'm saying with you is like, yeah, I mean, if you think there's some production stuff you can add, what I would do, what would be the most efficient and beneficial for you is articulate that as specific as possible. So get a reference track that you like that maybe is in that lane. If you've never done house before, start picking stuff to like, hey, here's a cool track that I can vibe with. Okay, what are some things? You know, write it down and, and don't give yourself a list of 15 things. Narrow it down to like, okay, what are like, if these four things or these four to three things were done, this track would be ready to be, you know, I, I can bump this in the next Burning Man, whatever. But, you know, like, what are those things? And sometimes it's just a moment of, I, I like to do that. I, I ask myself that question when I'm not in front of the DAW. So I'll, I'll play it in the car or whatever, but I get a, a, a piece of paper or when I'm on a walk or something and I'll listen to it and I actually write down, hey, you know, I think this track needs this. Mm -hmm. But not what it needs. It it has to be tailored to this track will be finished if fill in the blank. Because the track can always need something. We'll always find a reason to add or take away, add or take away. But in order for it to be like, I need this thing to be out by next week, what are the three things it needs for that to happen? A better vocal? Like, okay, what about the vocal? Well, I need to try the gated reverb thing or why? I don't know. I think it'd be cool. Or yeah, the vocals out of tune. I should tune the vocals. You see, you see the difference yeah. there. Yeah. And so that's gonna help you articulate and be more efficient of like getting yourself out of the way, and then also just having people around you that you can start playing the stuff and be like, man, this is cool. Similar to what David was saying, like having guys who can come in and be like, yeah, 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 that, that snare is a little too loud in context of this or whatever. Like, who can articulate some stuff for you there? So, yeah. but it seems like you 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 kind of know that. So uh, give yourself that time, that space, marinate in that, come up with those three to four things, write it down, whatever you use, charcoal, Crayola, pen, doesn't matter, just put it down. And then the next time you approach and you open that session, your primary task is nail one, two, and three. I can only work on these three things that will get the track out there. I can't start replacing the snare drum or changing the reverb. The moment you do that, slap your hand and say, nope, I got to do these three things. Yeah. Well, th this one actually, it felt like it kind of, I, I, besides like the vocal thing and maybe adding something, some extra, you know, effects or something, it felt like, you know, I'm ready to kind of just put it out there so that I can make something new. And there and you go. Because I've had other tracks, like I had one, I could not fix the kick in the bass. For the, I spent 100 hours working on this and I think it sounded better before I did that. And, because there was the relation, like I could actually hear the 